and we are live. Okay, I'll give it just a few seconds and then I'm going to get started. Oh, it's actually still only 529. So let me wait till we hit 530. And I will go. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Okay, it is 530. So I'm going to call to order this special meeting of the Gilroy City Council, 5.30 today. And I'm going to ask um, our city clerk for a roll call, a call to order and roll call. So roll call. Um, Councilmember Armandaris? Here. Councilmember Bracco? Here. Councilmember Hilton? Here. Councilmember Laura Munoz? Absent. And uh, Council Member Marks? Here. And Council Member Tovar? Here. And Council um, Mayor Blankley, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, all Council Members are participating remotely pursuant to the Governor's Executive Order number N2920 in order to minimize the spread of the COVID-19 virus. The meeting is being live streamed from the city website, cityofgilroy.org and is viewable on cable channel 17 and on Facebook Live. Public comments can be made during the meeting by watching the meeting online on Zoom at https colon forward slash forward slash rb.gy forward slash w1wamw or by calling 669-900-6833 using meeting ID 8832596-6739 and passcode 539515. <coughs> when I call the item you wish to speak on, press star nine on your telephone keypad or use the raise your hand icon. All right, we're gonna go straight into closed session. So Christina, are there any uh, public comments? on closed session items. If you wish to speak on this item, please press uh, star nine or uh, raise your hand. Hey, I should really read the um, the agenda item first before we call for comments on it. Oh, sorry, then please. So, I do, so I shall, I'll do that. So there are three closed sessions tonight. Uh, the first is conference with real property negotiator pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.8 and Gilroy Code 17A8, 17A.8A2. .8A2. The property is the old City Hall restaurant at 7400 Monterey Street, an adjacent parking lot. Negotiators are Jimmy Forbus and the other party is Fran and Bobby Bodette under negotiations terms of lease. Second one is also real property under the same two code sections. The property is the Gilroy Sports Park. Uh, 5925 Monterey Frontage Road, negotiator Jimmy Forbus, other parties, Sharks, Sports and Entertainment under negotiations price in terms of lease. The third uh, closed session is conference with labor negotiators, collective bargaining unit pursuant to government code section 54957.6 and Gilroy code section 17A114. Collective bargaining units are local 2805 IAFF fire unit representing Gilroy firefighters, AFSCME local 101 representing employees affiliated with AFSCME local 101, Gilroy Management Association, Gilroy Police Officers Association, Inc. representing Gilroy police officers, unrepresented confidential exempt employees, unrepresented confidential non-exempt employees. Uh, mine cuts off here. The negotiator though is uh, presumably Leanne and Jimmy. Uh, is there, so now would be appropriate to take public comment. All right. Any public comments? If you wish to speak on this, um, any of the items uh, in closed session, please press star nine or raise your hand at this time. Seeing and hearing none. Okay, then back to Andy uh, regarding entering closed session. Right. There's no advice I need to give. That's only really necessary for litigation. So we are now able to go into closed session and on going into closed session, we will take a vote to remain in closed session. That's a reportable action. So now we have to switch Zooms as I understand. Right, so we're leaving this meeting and going into a different one, right? Right. And then come, we'll come back to this one at six o'clock. Yes. Okay, bye everybody.
Am I in the right one? No, you're still in the city council one. Could you email me that link again real fast? Sorry. I believe uh, Lee Ann sent it, so let me reach out to her. Give me one minute.
Hello, everybody. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Right. So are we all here? Am I able to start? Looks to me like, okay, then I would like to call this uh, meeting to order, um, starting with uh, a call to order and a pledge of allegiance. Um, uh, Council member Marks, I didn't ask, but would you mind leading us in the pledge? Okay. All right, please stand. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic to which it stand, for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Invocation, we do not have one. <laughs> um, city clerk's report on posting the agenda. Tonight's meeting agenda was posted on Wednesday, June 2nd at 5.15 p.m. Roll right. call, council yes. member Armendariz. Present. Council Member Bracco? Here. Council Member Hilton? Here. Council Member Leroy Munoz? Present. Council Member Marks? Here. Council Member Tovar? Here. And Mayor Blankley? Here. Okay, all council members are participating remotely pursuant to the governor's executive order number N2920 in order to minimize the spread of the COVID-19 virus. The meeting is being live streamed from the city website www.cityofgilroy.org and is viewable on cable channel 17 and on Facebook Live. Public comments can be made during the meeting by watching the meeting online on Zoom at https colon forward slash forward slash rb dot gy forward slash w1 wamw or by calling 669 nine zero zero six eight three three using meeting ID eight eight three two five nine six six seven three nine and passcode five three nine five one five. When I call the item you wish to speak on, press star nine on your telephone keypad or use the raise your hand icon. Okay, under orders of the day, council, I would like to move item 12A to 11B. 12A is the unhoused ad hoc committee report. I'd like to move that to 11B, which is right before we get into the budget so that it is clear to council members and the public that whatever comes of the ad hoc committee's recommendations is not part of the next agenda item, which is the budget. And that if there is anything in there, whatever it is, if there's quality of life officers, whatever it is, it has to be agreed to by the council there separately to pursue and is not part of the budget item for the, uh, the in the following item. Okay. Understood. Very good. All right. Then with that, I would like to move on to item four, which is employee introductions, promotion of fire division chief, Sean Pagambri. And Chief Wyatt, you're going to take care of that, yes? Yes, ma'am, I sure will. Okay. Um, thank you, Honorable Mayor and Council. I just want to um, do a quick introduction, and then I have them wait, waiting in the um, the other section, and so maybe the the uh, the clerk can uh, can bring them up. Um, in any event, uh, Sean uh, comes to us with a wealth of experience and knowledge. Uh, he was born and raised in South San Jose, and he's been living in Gilroy, though, for the past 21 years. Uh, he's married to an amazing wife uh, by the name of Christine. He has two kids, Emma, 18, and uh, she's going to Arizona State this fall. And a uh, uh, Ian, I'm sorry, the boy's name is Ian, 16, a senior uh, next year at uh, Monta Vista High School in Watsonville. Uh, 
Sean started his career uh, with the uh, California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection as a seasonal firefighter. Uh, then he um, uh, began working as a paramedic with them. He got hired with the city of Salinas and worked there for four years before being recruited by uh, former fire chief Jeff Klatt to help start the paramedic program. He thus became one of the very first paramedics for uh, the city. He was uh, an essential um, uh, provider and um, developer of the uh, star car or our ambulance, the fire ambulance that we have. He also was the co-founding member of our uh, uh, quality assurance program that we currently use today. Um, he, is, uh, he was also a paramedic preceptor, a field training officer, um, a um, uh, infectious disease uh, officer. And in fact, he led the, uh, the department's vaccination program uh, to get everyone vaccinated here and then coordinated with the city to begin getting city employees vaccinated. And he eventually uh, helped out and established the uh, uh, vaccinations out in the uh, parking lot for the disabled people over at Gilroy High School. So he's been very active. Uh, he's been a acting division chief for the past 10 years. And of course, it was only natural that, uh, that I uh, tried to persuade him to um, take the next step and become a permanent member of our command staff. Uh, there's two things that he's most proud of, and I just want to mention those real quickly. Uh, he believes that our uh, paramedic program is a top-notch program. I, I would agree with him. He believes it's also one of the best in the area. Uh, our firefighters, day in and day out, are high performers who largely go unrecognized for their consistent delivery of quality customer service and extraordinary medical care for our community. And again, I agree with all of that. And one final note from me, uh, he, he comes to us with a high degree of integrity and um, just a outstanding uh, person overall. He, um, I, can't, I couldn't uh, have picked a better, better candidate. So with that, and hopefully he can um, say a couple words. He's, if he's on, I don't see his name yet. Um, Sean, can you hear us? No, it looks like he, he had trouble getting on. He did say that he was able to get into the waiting room, but I, I don't think he's been allowed to come out of it. <laughs> Christina, do you see him in the waiting room? I don't know. Um, is he dialing in as an attendee? Yeah, he, he dialed in as an attendee and um, his phone number should appear as 408-623-4487. Okay. He's in the attendees. Yeah, I see him. Uh, moving him over to um, our panelists. Great, thank you. I'm, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. Oh, you can hear me? Go ahead, Sean. Oh, great. Well, thank you, uh, Honorable Mayor, City Council. Uh, I, I'm just, I just want to thank, say thank you. Um, I'm extremely, extremely grateful. Uh, to work for the city of Gilroy, it's been a, just an awesome career, and um, I just feel really blessed to um, to move up again in rank and to continue to serve our city um, in this new role. Um, I am super excited about where our department's going um, and the next chapter uh, that we're entering in, um, and I'm just looking forward to partnering um, with all of you and in, in continuing to make Gilroy the awesome city that it is. So. Um, with that, I'm just, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity, um, and I just I look forward to working with, with all of you, so thank you very much. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> okay. Yay. That's the fun stuff. Okay, moving on to item five, ceremonial items. Um, we don't have any. Uh, presentations to the council. This is where if, if there's anyone from the public who would like to speak on something not on the agenda, but within the jurisdiction of the Gilroy City Council. Do we have any public comments? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. Seeing none. All right, thank you. Okay, reports of council members. 
Council Member Bracco. Yes, um, we met the library district uh, approved their 22-23 budget. Um, we have $19 million in reserves. So the library is very healthy. And we voted to proceed on beefing up our cybersecurity. And that's it for my report. All right, thank you. Council Member Armendariz. Uh, good evening. Um, a couple things. I attended the Gilroy Downtown Business Association meeting. Um, they are holding a fundraiser for um, flags to be posted in downtown and um, gearing up for a couple of events downtown um, as things are opening up. And also a few folks are going to be tra traveling to Caramel, Indiana to look for best practices um, in how a city that is very similar to ours um, has really thrived economically and uh, in terms of its development that's seen as a model city. So that's happening. Also, um, the Historic Heritage Committee meeting was canceled. Um, and earlier today, I uh, attended the funeral of our local um, father, um, son, and VTA um, ATU member, um, Adrian Bayesa. It was, um, we lost him in the tragic killings um, at the VTA a couple weeks ago in San Jose. And so, um, um, his family, of course, is, is suffering from a devastating loss and just want the community to know that they appreciate the, um, the love and donations and the outpouring of support that our community was able to provide and, and continues to, to generously share with them. Thank you. Councilmember Marks. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, Council Member Armandaris and I both attended the Downtown Business Association. I'm gonna give you a little bit more um, input into what went on that night. Uh, there is a Gourmet Alley event on Saturday, June 26th from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Vendors will be contributing some of their proceeds that evening to help Ashford Heirloom complete their renovation after the untimely death of Steve Ashford. The public will also be able to make donations that evening to this, um, to this fundraiser. Come enjoy food, music, and learn more about Gourmet Alley has in store for all of us in the near future. There is also going to be a vendor fair on July 10th. Come and shop locally. Downtown Live begins, begins oh. Thursday, July 22nd with JJ Hogg performing. Plan on coming down to reconnect with old friends, make new ones, dance, eat, and have a great time. A recent report came out stating that 32% of all small businesses that closed during the pandemic were from California. Gilroy was pretty lucky that we only had a few that closed and most of those were due to retirement. Downtown still has concerns about the car show and its frequency and they are surveying the downtown businesses for their input. There will be a report back to the GDA, GDBA board and the city. And as Council Member Armandaris said, there is a fundraiser to replace the flags and flagpoles. They're displayed numerous times a year in the downtown area. If any of you would like to contribute, please go to the Gilroy Downtown Facebook page and look for the donate button. And last but certainly not least, the west side of Monterey Street between 5th and 6th Streets is getting a makeover. A big shout out to the members of the GDBA board who are donating their own money and time to make this happen. Jeff Orth is building benches out of different types of furniture and Gary Walton is donating flower pots and flowers to be placed in front of these businesses. The board is also going to be power washing the front of these buildings and washing the windows. The GDBA hopes this will inspire other businesses to follow this lead and do the same for their buildings. Thank you very much, GDBA. I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. That's my report for this evening. Okay, Council Member Hilton. Thank you, Mary Blinkley. Um, the community invited is invited to watch the county's unhoused task force meeting, which is reconvening on June 10th, this Thursday at 530. Um, and I believe Council Member Bracco still represents us on that task force. Um, I'd also like to uh, wish a, uh, Frank Arendondo from Gilroy a special happy birthday. He turned 100 last Saturday, surrounded by his family. Um, I was contacted by his granddaughter. And, um, you know, he's a World War II veteran, lived in Gilroy for over 50 years. He also got a special visit. 
and gift from our local uh, firefighters as well. So happy birthday to him. And uh, lastly, I too would like to send my love and support to the VTA family, um, to the ATU local 265 transit union and AFSCME workers who lost their lives in the VTA shooting. And to their families and fellow union members that have been left behind, I stand with you in solidarity as a fellow union worker myself. And my condolences to the family of Adrian Baeza, who lived here in Gilroy as well. Thank you. All right, Council Member Tovar. Thank you, Mayor. A few things. Uh, recently, Council Member Armanderas and I attended the Salvation Army's uh, Community uh, Awards Ceremony, where uh, we were able to sort of congratulate many of our local uh, residents who give up quite a bit of their time and dedication to, to help the Salvation Army here in Gilroy. And uh, we were honored to give them all a certificate and say a few words in regards to how much we appreciate them. So thank you to all the volunteers in Gilroy that help our Salvation Army. Uh, secondly, I wanna thank everybody who was in attendance who also supported me and um, in regards to the uh, pride flag raising event that we had, I think it went, extremely well and I appreciate everybody's support on that. Finally, um, I also have been talking to several local businesses who appreciate actually the car show and how much business it's bringing to several of our businesses downtown. So hopefully we can find a way to make it even better and make it happen. So I look forward to that report and hopefully it'll be an accurate report that will be shared with the entire council. Thank you. Thank you. Council member LaRoman Yost. Thank you, Mayor. The Gilroy Economic Development Corporation has its meeting coming up this Wednesday on June 9th, where we'll get reports from Visit Gilroy, the Chamber, and Gavilan Community College, among others. So I'll report back on those at our next meeting. The Mobility Partnership meeting, which was originally scheduled for this week, uh, will not be taking place. The Mobility Partnership, as most everyone knows, is the uh, collaboration between elected officials from Santa Clara County, as well as San Benito County, coming together to discuss issues of mutual concern around transportation. And certainly given the involvement and the leadership of VTA in that effort, this month's meeting has been canceled. I'm not sure when the next one will be scheduled, uh, presumably some point in Q3 of this year. And like so many others, I, I'm just wishing the very best to, uh, to all of the victims' families, but in particular, um, Adrian Bayesa, a fellow Gilroyan um, who died trying to help protect others. Um, he made calls, he, he took action that, uh, that ultimately saved the lives of others on that, on that terrible morning. Um, you know, we, we come from a place, unfortunately, where we know what it's like to go through this. And, um, and I can only wish his family just peace and comfort in what has to be a very difficult time. Thank you, council member. Uh, yes, the uh, mobility partnership meeting was postponed. They did not give a new date, right? And for, for some members of the public, that's the, the biggest thing right now that's going on with that partnership is the Highway 25 and 101 interchange. That's what we were hoping to hear, hear more about, get more details on. Um, I've been doing everything VTA. I've been at Caltrain meetings, ANF board meetings, PAC meetings, and the VTA board. Another thing that was postponed at the VTA board meeting this week because they were trying to allow more time um, to recognize the victims and their families and the funeral, upcoming funeral arrangements, are, uh, is to postpone to August 5th the transit-oriented development here in Gilroy. And uh, what they, what they want to do is try to get approval to go out for an RFP, what we call an RFP, and uh, they're not going to hear that now until August 5th. So working on that. Um, I, was, I was at the funeral, um, been vaccinated, they were vaccinated, the biggest, biggest hug from Adrian's mom that I got, and same with his wife, they are, I can tell you, very, very appreciative of our entire community in helping the logistics of them setting up this funeral and the burial that are all here in Gilroy. And the cutest thing, they did a lot of, of those speeches, a lot of his friends and family, and the cutest one were two of his cousins that went up there and said, when they were little, you know, they both had braces on and he called them Caltrain and Amtrak, <laughs> Amtrak. <laughs> so one was Caltrain and one was Amtrak. 
um, because of the braces they wore and he was with VTA. And VTA's uh, board chair was also there. He came down from Cupertino. So it was, it was really, really, really nice. So very, very sad, only 29 years old. The little boy, Jojo, two years old, and he, he wasn't there, uh, but the funeral is very nice. Okay, enough of that. Future council initiated agenda items. Uh, does anyone, anyone have something they wish to raise uh, at this point? Okay, um, on to consent calendar. Um, any public comments on the consent calendar? Does Deanna make a motion to approve? Okay, there were no public comments? No. Okay. no. okay, sorry, just want to make sure I heard that. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, a motion and a second by Councilmember Rocco and then Councilmember LaRoman Yost to approve the consent calendar. Roll call. Councilmember Hermanetti? Yes. Councilmember Bracco? Yes. Councilmember Hilton? Aye. Councilmember Lera Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blankley? Yes. All right. Moving on to item 10 bids and proposals. Award a contract to Golden Bay Construction Inc. for the West 10th Street uh, crossing at Orchard Drive, West, West 10th crossing at Orchard Drive project, number 21 PW269, and approve a project expenditure of $150,895. And staff report will be Daryl, correct? Public Works Director. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council members. If I could share my screen here for a moment. Okay. Okay, as you spoke, Madam Mayor, tonight is about the award of a contract to Golden Bay Construction for the West 10th Street Crossing at Orchard Drive Project. Uh, as you can see on the map here, the location there is adjacent to our high school, right there at the frontage there. Uh, a little bit of the background here is the project is located, of course, adjacent to the, to the high school, as we just shown you. Um, there's been a history of bicycle, pedestrian, and vehicular concerns at this location, which we'll be addressing. City staff uh, consulted with the high school during the project and development phase of this project, and will construct safety improvements at 10th Street and Orchard Drive intersection. The improvements will include rectangular rapid flashing beacons, curb extensions to shorten pedestrian crossings, striping and flexible posts to narrow travel lanes, reduce vehicle speeds, buffered bike lane striping to separate bikes from travel and parking lanes, and green pavement surface to alert road users of the bike lanes. The city issued a request for these proposals for design of improvements for this project in June of 2020. The city received five proposals and selected Crossroad Lab based on firm qualifications, uh, project understanding and ability to meet the project schedule. The city executed this agreement with this design firm uh, in September of 2020 for $12,000. Scope of services included uh, uh, design of the RFB system, ADA compliant curb ramps, curb extensions, and striping improvements to enhance pedestrian and bicycle safety. It was advertised in our San Jose Mercury News and citywide city website in March of uh, 2021. Bids were opened in April of 2021 and the staff received three responsive bids. The lowest responsive bidder was Golden Bay Construction and the construction is scheduled to be completed prior to school opening this fall. The fiscal portion of this project uh, is a total bid of $137,177 a 10% contingency of $13,717. The bid plus contingency is $150,895. As mentioned earlier, our design costs were $12,000. So our total project costs amount to $162,895. The high school has agreed to fund half of this project. So the city's cost um, after their contribution will be $81,477. The funding source for this project is with our gas tax fund 211. Tonight we're recommending that the council adopt a resolution of the city council of the city of Gilroy amending the budget for the city of Gilroy for fiscal year 2021 and appropriating proposed expenditure amendments. 
we propose the, uh, the uh, um, council award a contract to Golden Bay Construction in the amount of $137,177.50 with an additional project contingency of $13,717.50 for a total construction cost of $150,895 for the West 10th Crossing at Orchard Drive project, project number 21 PW269 and authorize the city administrator to execute the contract and associated documents. And I'm here with any questions that you may have. Okay, council, um, start raising hands if you have any questions of Daryl. Nobody? All right then, uh, do we have any public comments? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine or raise your hand at this time. Seeing, hearing none. Okay, back to council. Do I have a motion? There are two, by the way, A and B. So move for approval, A and B. Do we have to do separately? Uh, do we That's have to do separate votes? Yes. Okay, separate votes. So the first one made by Councilmember Tovar. Is there a second? No, I'll, I'll second. second. Okay, Councilmember Mark, second. And this is to adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Gilroy amending the budget for the city of Gilroy for fiscal year 2021, 20, 2020 to 2021, and appropriating proposed expenditure amendments. Roll call vote. Councilmember Hermandariz? Yes. Councilmember Bracco? Yes. Councilmember Hilton? Aye. Councilmember Lara Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley. Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. So now part B, uh, motion by Council Member Tovar, seconded by? I'll second it. Council Member Leromagnos to award a contract to Golden Bay Construction Inc. in the amount of $137,177.50 with an additional project contingency of 10%, 13,717.5 for a total cost of 150,895 for the West 10th Crossing at Orchard Drive, project number 21 PW269 and authorize the city administrator to execute the contract and associated documents. Roll call. Council member Armandariz? Yes. Council member Bracco? Yes. Council member Hilton? Aye. Council member Laura Munoz? Yes. Council member Marks? Yes. Council member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley. Yes. All right. So that passes unanimously. The next item is 11A. And we're going to be pushing this one out again because there was another problem with the public notification in the newspaper about this. So I do have to open it up for public comment in case anyone is here who wants to speak on this item. But otherwise, it's going to the June 21st meeting. Are there any Yes. If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. Seeing and hearing none. Okay, thank you. And this was a publishing error. This wasn't our city clerk's department. So thank you. Okay. All right. So now that that was 11A. So now 11B is what we moved up, what was uh, 12A. So this is the Council unhoused ad hoc committee update. Council member Marks is gonna do it, but I wanna say as a reminder, I asked that we move this to here so that we can discuss here items that the council majority would like staff to return with on funding options from the surplus from the American Rescue Act. So that's what we're hoping to get here. These are all items that are coming up here are not in the budget that is coming in our next item and need to be addressed here separately. Okay, so unhoused committee, you are on. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight we, we will be bringing forth four recommendations for the council to consider funding. The items are safe parking, a garbage removal program, a garbage compactor, and two quality of life officers. Council member Bronco, Tovar, and myself will be presenting information on each of these items. I will start with safe parking. An RFP will be issued for safe parking and interested groups can apply. 
The applicant must have secured a location for the safe parking, detail how it will be administered and the cost to run it. Please keep in mind our budget will not be paying 100% of the cost to run safe parking if the item is approved by the council for funding. Our city administrator will conduct the RFP process. Are there any questions about that from the council? Any questions, and council members, on safe parking? Council member Marks? Yes. I had a brief question. Just what are the expected costs that would go into uh, the safe parking program? I'm assuming enforcement would be a part of that. We talked about the highest we would go would be 50000 from the city's part. And then whoever won the RFP would have to pay the rest. A slight and, correction. Yeah, up to 50000 obviously. Up to, that's correct. Yeah. Up to 50000 that's correct. And what are what are the elements that cost money for, with regard to that program? Well, if they buy um, a laundry, have bathrooms, shower, um, security, are probably the main costs. Uh, council members Bracco and Tovar, did I forget anything on that of what else it could cost, or what else is included in the cost? Well, it'd be basically a managing fee. It'd be up to them on running it and then they would just charge us to manage it. Okay. Yeah, it's Thank similar. So, go ahead, Council Member Tovar, you were gonna say yeah. something? No, no, yeah, no, I, I was gonna say the same exact thing. No, you're fine. Oh, I, I am not on their committee. I just know what I've learned from Morgan Hill's program, you know, at the Bible Church and Morgan Hill puts in $30,000 and then with donations that go to the Compassion Center and through the Morgan Hill Bible Church themselves, that funds the rest of it. So the city's contribution, well, it's $30,000 and it's, it's also a city staff person, right? Rebecca Garcia there that does some of the overseeing and managing of it too. Okay, that's a safe parking. All right, I see uh, council member Armandaris has her hand up. Thank you. Um, so we would expect um, a nonprofit or a service organization to, to bid on this and to provide the site the staffing and the support, um, the necessary like material support and support services for $50,000. Is that per year? Is this one year? Um, because it just seems like that, that's a really low amount. Well, I think, well, the council would make be the decision makers on whether we fund it from, you know, beyond a year. Um, I think we would have to see how it runs and then next year have this discussion again. If the council wants to put in more money towards that, that would be wonderful. But you know, that's what we're offering because you know, we know realistically there are other items that are going to be talked about tonight. So yeah, it's uh, going to be up to you. Councilmember Armadares, if I may. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. I mean, for me, I would like to see it happen constantly year after year, but obviously we need to see how it goes. And if it's successful, um year one obviously because i think it's something that's needed um i'm all for sort of continuing sort of moving forward with this obviously and yeah you know if it's fifty thousand or more then obviously if it's something that the majority of the council is in favor for then and if it's going to benefit um then by all means i'm open to that as well so i i do support it um um but my concern is like the metrics how do we consider it um successful right and uh, who sets up those metrics and how are we going to decide um, what the parameters are, what the program rules are, things like that. Right? That, will be, that will be from the people applying. Um, we will be looking over the RFPs to come up with a decision on what how they're going to run it. Um, we will know if it's a success by how many people are going out and getting jobs and being housed because it's not a permanent housing situation. Um, most safe parkings uh, only have people stay there for around six to nine months because the goal is to get job training if they don't already have a job. If they're going to school, um, they have to follow the rules uh, of, the, of the park. It has to be drug free, alcohol free. Uh, we envision right now the need is greatest for single women and then women with children. So that probably we would, you know, the, whoever had the program would be reaching out to them first. 
uh, until they got some permanent housing. Um, are these things that you guys wrote out or these are things that you're imagining right now? This is probably what we're imagining from Morgan Hill that what, what the citizens, you know, probably would want if it was going to be in their neighborhood. This is all going to come from the service agencies that approach us, you know, on what they're going to be selling themselves on how they can run a safe parking. And then so we will my, determine who gets it. My concerns are, I guess, about the process. Like, is the ad hoc committee going to stop and write out these um, priorities and these parameters is that going to be done because we don't have a Becky Garcia right is that going to be done by the city manager or is there another committee going to be created I think well that's a good very good question yeah. um, Jimmy will be doing the RFP so Jimmy would you like to answer that question well sure I, th I think the RFP would be conducted by city staff and uh, most likely would come out of my office because that's where the housing components are and so we would use um, examples we received and uh, from other communities we have those and would tailor that to see uh, what responses would be generated, we would take those responses back to the ad hoc housing committee. But ultimately, uh, city staff would make a recommendation to the entire council about awarding a contract and what performance matrix and items that uh, the council as a whole would, would want to see. So um, we would certainly bring that back as, a, as something for the entire council to consider. Yeah, I, I would like to, to chime in there that uh, it would go through the city. This council, of course, at any time could decide if they want an ad this to be an ad hoc committee thing and then who's going to be on that ad hoc committee. But at this stage, it's just, do you want to even consider a safe parking program that funds up to $50,000? What we know, and it would be, it has to be a pilot program. It has to be for a, a short period of time to start. And to council member Armandaris's question earlier, it's not necessarily going to be on property owned or somehow rented by the uh, agency that's going to be running it. That could be a separate thing too, where the city or, or church or not, not city land, but where we assist in trying to get property. So that 50,000 is not going to cover the land. Like I said, in Morgan Hill's case, it's a 30,000 contribution with the assistance of one person, but the, it's the church that provides the property. It's the agency that provides the, the staffing of it and, and all of that. So right. I, I see Council Member Hilton's hand up. I want to make sure that we just know that the details of it come through that RFP. We're not going to iron those out tonight. That is something that will go through Jimmy's office. I just, yeah, I just brought them up because they're really important when it comes yes. to how the right, what our expectations are, how things are going to be run, and how the RFP is written in the first place. Agreed. Mm -hmm. so. Agreed. But that's not what tonight's not writing the RFP. So, but thank you. You are correct. You are correct. Council Member Hilton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I, I really like the idea, oops, sorry. <laughs> I like the idea of um, the RFP process because then it does allow the creativity. So, um, you know, kudos to that. I, and I, I totally agree on that. We get to see any and all possibilities. What, are, what, what is your idea? Do you want to come to city land? Do you have a church that you're, you know, friends with or you want to do it? That's awesome. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. We have 300,000 left over that we're working with, right? For right. all these recommendations, okay. Um, so yeah, I, I'm 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 excited to see this go through. The only other question that I have is, um, it it seems that if we continue into this RFP process and if the ad hoc committee is a part of it, we're kind of making this a long-standing ad hoc committee, which is not supposed to be the way the ad hoc is supposed to be resolved. And it was created last September. Would you guys be interested in making the sustaining committees if you're going to be still a part of it? And that way we can have agendas, we can have minutes and let the public be involved. Or at what point are we going to stop calling this an ad hoc? And it's almost been a year. Um, those are my questions. I think ad hoc committees can only go for a year. So I think once we get council approval on these different recommendations and move forward, the ad hoc committee is defunct. Correct, Jimmy? There, yeah, I would say there's definitely an end in sight, and yes. that's really up to the, the council and ad hoc committee themselves uh, to determine when that gets handed off. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, Carol, are you continuing with? Um, uh, yes, that's it for safe parking. Uh, council member Tovar, would you like to talk about the Garbage program and the trash compactor, please. Excuse me, Mrs. Mayor. Oh, yes. Um, why don't we take them one at a time, thumbs up or thumbs down as we go through them? 
Oh, we can. I thought maybe everyone wanted to hear what's out there before they do. We can do that. Yeah. All right. Let's see a thumbs up for those who want to um, move forward with a safe parking, with, with what we just discussed, safe parking. So it looks to me like everybody. Okay. Very good. We can do it that way. So safe parking, Jimmy, get that one down. <laughs> okay. All right. Council Member Tovar. Thank you. So our, our next recommendation, obviously, well, the next two recommendations, obviously, are support of a, our garbage removal program. Um, and as you know, uh, recently we had, for example, we had the uh, mattress removal program and we're envisioning, envisioning something very similar to where, um, obviously, we not only clean up um, the hot spots or the encampments that need clean up to assist with those, but the entire city as well. You know, and I know there are many cities in the area that do programs like this. Um, have been very successful. Um, they're welcomed by the community and it helps keep the, the entire city, not just one particular area, but the entire city uh, clean and presentable, especially for people um, visiting our city. And I think it's something that is long overdue and something that's needed. In addition to that, we're also looking at possibly purchasing a trash compactor um, that would assist with, with all this. And obviously, um, you know, again, the main objective and goal is to, to clean up our city to make sure it's clean uh, and, and to be proactive and not reactive, meaning that uh, it would be something that would be in effect, you know, we envision five, five days a week. So obviously it'd be going around the entire city um, using the trash compactor truck to pick up uh, garbage or junk or whatever it may be. Again, to make sure that um, the entire city is clean. Okay, uh, before I go to council questions, it occurs to me that uh, council member Bracco, what you just had me do before, and we did, we all did a thumbs up, but I really need to go to public comment. I should, oh. we should hear from the public before we do any of that. So we'll, we'll um, I tell you what, let's, let's ask questions of what council member Tovar just said, but, uh, but before we do any kind of thumbs up thing, we'll go to public comment, see if there's anything about safe parking too, and this item and then go forward. Okay, so Council Member Hilton, I see your hand. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so Council Member Tovar, I, I'm looking back on number three. And so some of the stuff had, um, this will require an RFP to seek qualified and experienced agencies. Is that still what we're thinking or we're thinking city staff is gonna do this? Is it still an RFP? Yes, it'll still be an RFP. Okay. for a service agency or nonprofit to apply for the garbage program. And then tonight, uh, council, if they give a thumbs up, we would be putting some money into that program. Again, you know, we wouldn't be paying 100% of it. Um, and then with the garbage truck compactor, the city envisions like when, when people have dumped furniture, and I guess I shouldn't be saying this because I don't want everyone now dumping furniture all over the city, but our compactor truck could then pick it up and um, and compact all the garbage and refuge refuse that we're finding. But th the city would be the ones in charge of the compactor truck though. It would be an employee that would be driving it. Whoever did the garbage removal program, they would have to provide their own truck. And because we're paying them for this, they would have to pay for the dumping of the garbage in that truck. And is Recology still want to be um, a part of this program, like it says? Um, Recology and, and, you know, Fred and Dion helped me out here. As far as I know, Recology wasn't really interested in doing it on a daily basis or every other day. They would, they would pick up garbage once a week. But the problem we're having is that in some spots of the city, the homeless are help, the unhoused are helping us out by backing up the garbage, but it's sitting, you know, for a week or two before it gets picked up. And the public is asking for more frequent pickups. So I almost think it would have to be coming from a, a private nonprofit or service agency that would have the time to do it. This recall has their designated routes. Okay. And I'm sorry, I must have missed it. What what, what did you what did we say the amount was up to? We didn't. 
Not we didn't. Sorry. Okay. I, I want right. I want counsel to yeah. you know, and, talk and about Thank you. Jimmy has also said to you guys as we're having these discussions that you don't necessarily need to put a dollar amount. If he gets the thumbs up from everybody after public comment of the specific items you want, then he'll come back to us with what can be done for each of them. And then you can tweak or you know do whatever you want from there. But it's, it's just too hard to know what some of this stuff will cost until you actually dig in. And nobody's going to dig in until we have council majority saying to dig in. Thank, thank you, Carol. Sorry, I'm having um, trouble with my um, with my mic. But yeah, thank oh, you. No problem. Hilton, my hands up. We're good. I, I see that. I was waiting for Council Member Tovar to finish. Okay, Council Member Armendariz. Thanks. So, um, in being out at the encampments uh, pretty often, I've seen um, blue bags and I've seen bags distributed by pit stop, um, and I've seen our um, our contractor, our landscape contractor, pick up those bags. Um, can't we make that part of our uh, part of part of the services that they provide for us? I've seen them at the parks picking up those those bags when folks bag up their folks of the encampments bag up their garbage and put them out. Then our our contractors do that. Now, what contractors do we have doing that? We have we landscape contractors. Oh, that okay. take care of parks. Jensen. Yeah, I could answer that question. Yeah, okay. let Jimmy answer that. Uh, yeah, they are doing that as most likely part of uh, park cleanup or items that are around where they're 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 working. So we would certainly reach out to them and see enhanced services and see if that's more cost effective since we already have a, a pretty large contract with them to get that increased service. So. Uh, it's really upon me to find the solutions that I think are best cost effective and utilize what we're already doing and uh, and get the best bang for our dollar. So yes, definitely that would be an area we would look. And we just um, granted uh, Gilroy Compassion Center as part of their uh, CDBG um, request. We just granted them money to do um, garbage pickup as well. Right, they are doing some of it because we did talk with Compassion Center. The problem is there are streets in Gilroy that have these bags on them that that these service agencies or Jensen's don't, don't travel to. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we want to start addressing mainly is all these other places throughout the city right. and cleaning up those areas and keeping them clean. Yeah. And again, keep in mind that, yeah, like Council Member Mark's saying, we envision obviously that it, it would be for the entire city. So mm -hmm. uh, again, there, there are hot spots, obviously, and uh, there's areas and encampments, obviously, that we want to help, but we, we're envisioning it that it'd be for the entire city. And again, we're being proactive and out there and, um, you know, making sure that the entire city is clean. So, so not just at the homeless encampments, not it's just it can be everywhere. Either. It's everywhere. Right. Citywide. And I'd like to just clarify something, too. This would not change, would it? Our ability to actually go in and clean up properties that aren't ours, like Caltrans or Valley Water, right? That that remains with us needing to contact those agencies to clean up theirs, right? Okay, thank you, Jimmy, for nodding on that. Okay, so let me go to public comment now, and then I'll come back to council. So do we have any public comments, Christina, on, um, on either the safe parking program or garbage removal program or garbage compactor? We have two um, people raising their hands. So we'll start off with uh, Freda, you may speak. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to actually, this was great. These were two things I wanted to discuss in unison. Um, number one, I was one of the volunteers for safe parking in Morgan Hill. And I have to say, if you're using that as a role model, I'm deeply, deeply concerned. I reached out to Council Member Bracco, Mayor Blankley called me back on um, between flights to Houston, um, Council Member uh, uh, Armaderas, she, uh, we've talked about this extensively. I don't think there's anybody on here I haven't spoken to. When you sit with a family on Zoom or on FaceTime and see them being evicted within 20 minutes with crying children, after they've been in a program, they weren't offered their due process. They weren't offered to go and get an eviction. They were just thrown out on the streets within 20 minutes. And one parent even had CPS there and she was trying to keep her children while their 
harassing her to get out of her unit. You can't do 20 minute evictions with children. A lot of stuff that I supplied there at that site and Rebecca um, Armaderas, she got us two BMX bikes. They had to leave in such a hurry. That poor child lost his bike. You can't do that to families. I'm okay with doing safe parking. Bless you all for thinking about it. But I'm thinking about the long-term ramifications. That child would never forget a 20-minute eviction. He'll never see police the same way. He saw his mother crying and trying to videotape it while advocating for herself, while men standing outside her door pounding on it. This is not humane. This is not the way we treat people. This is why I've been begging you all for trained caseworkers. These are not just parents. These are young children that are going to grow up and they're going to be tomorrow's leaders and doctors and, and lawyers. They're going to be something one day. I know I became something one day. And I really want you to protect their hearts. Forget about the parents. Forget about everything else. There are children involved. They're innocent. School is going on. Mama's crying. It's chaos. This is not trained casework for the unhomed. And then when she finally got thrown out, well, let's call her case A, right? I sent her to a pit stop friend of mine and she just got approved for housing. She was in that program for a year and never got the casework that it took her two weeks to get an apartment and she's approved on 10th street, God bless. Her child saved, that child is saved from this. But I'm begging each and every one of you to please really keep in mind when you set something up like this, there has to be standards of care that are wholly lacking now and children are suffering. Please listen to my words. I only mean the best for everybody. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Anyone else, Christina? Yes, we have um, Miss, I'm not sure if it's Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Scagliotti. You may speak. Yes, you have three minutes. Hello, my name is Mickey Scagliotti and I am a resident of Gilroy. Um, my comment pertains to the unhoused ad hoc committee's report. And I want to show support of establishing safe parking um, for those using their vehicles for housing. Um, I believe this to be a priority here in Gilroy. I am concerned about the quality of life officers in that potential position. Um, and I would prefer any funding for personnel to go to partner with the County Office of Supportive Housing and establish a partnership to have access to their programs and services. Um, ultimately, I would hope that the city can focus on funding programs that prevent homelessness in the first place, as well as programs that prevent prolonged homelessness. Thank you for this chance to comment. Thank you. Okay, are there any other comments? If you wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand at this time or press start nine to unmute yourself. See none. Okay, so where we left off then is to see um, if we have a thumbs up majority for garbage removal program and a garbage compactor. Correct. Okay. Well, I, I thought we we're going to separate those two out because yeah. we haven't talked about Oh, we can. We, cer I agree. we certainly, yes, we certainly can. Separate them. Okay. So let's do the garbage removal program first then. Garbage removal program. Okay, that is everybody, correct? correct? Okay, so that's a thumbs up. And now what about the garbage compactor? Yeah, I am too. So I don't see Rebecca's hand and gosh, I can't see uh, everybody. I just, I'd like, I have some more questions about the contract, uh, the compactor. The compactor, okay, go yeah. ahead. Just uh, in terms of cost and um, servicing, I, I feel like um, like our money would be better spent on uh, direct services to the homeless because this committee is created to study and, and look into the needs of the homeless. And I, I think we have um, 
other agencies, other divisions that can look at um, the physical right of garbage, um, especially if this is going to be something citywide. Like, I think we need to to really focus on homeless or homelessness services. Okay. So can somebody tell me what a con a compactor, a trash compactor costs? Daryl or Jimmy, would either one of you have a clue on that one? Or Dion? Uh, actually, you, Dion, you yeah. Don't know Dion. until it goes out uh, for bid, but you're looking at anywhere from a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, depending on what it is. Um, but somebody that buys a lot of equipment, that's not a high price tag. I pay that much for a small tow truck. Um, and, and this isn't a garbage truck like you see come pick up your trash at your house. These are the ones that have the, the back is open. It, it'll take uh, things like high chairs, couches, and it'll crush them and, and so that they can dispose of them. We have a big problem in Gilroy right now with trash. Somebody dumps a load of trash alongside the road. And if it doesn't get picked up, more people just keep dumping there. So that, that's one of the problems that um, this truck will be able to address. Um, if it was just for the homeless needs, I, I, I couldn't see spending that kind of money to do it. But since we, we do have a need in the city for something like this, then, then we see combining the two. Okay, um, Councilmember Armendariz, your hand is still raised. Are you meaning to ask something yeah. else or can I move on to Councilmember Hilton? No, I had to ask something else. Okay, go ahead so, and ask. Um, so I, I feel like the garbage removal and the trash compactor, the garbage removal I can understand, um, our community does need help. Um, Speaking of trash, and it could be really costly, right? Getting and it's hard for some people to get their items over to um, to the dump, you know, right to the transfer station or whatever it's called. But um, this committee is the focus is homelessness, right? And the focus is um, on on the homeless and the needs and the services that 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 we need to help people not be homeless. And so, I'm not. I can't. Just a question. Is there a question? So I, I'm, I'm getting there, Mayor. Mayor. Okay. I can't understand how do how can we justify spending that a hundred to two hundred thousand, so two to four times as much as we're going to spend on direct services to homeless families and homeless people uh, on on a, a trash compactor that's only going to going to address the superficial, right? The the visible. Uh, um, symptoms of, of unhoused people, right? Like that doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I can't support that. Okay, thank you. Council Member Hilton. Yeah, the reason why I can't support it is exactly for what um, Council Member Bracco just said is that um, we have a trash problem with people dumping trash. I agree with that. I, I'll legislate that. I'll support that policy. I would support that into the budget, but I'd like to see this homeless ad hoc committee focus on homeless services. Um, and uh, that's what I'd like to see all this funding go to because now I'm even more concerned that our operating budget for the next two years is not going to have any type of homeless services uh, in it. So this is the only limited funding that we have. Um, so that's why I don't support that. Thank okay, you. thank you. It's a tough guess, one. We all know I we get a lot of your claims on trash. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. Council Member Marks. I know. I think to maybe help out uh, Council Member Hilton and Council Member Armendaris, the reason why that subject was ever even brought up to us, because, you know, when we're talking about it, yeah, it is kind of crazy. Why are we doing a garbage compacting truck when we're trying to address the homeless? I was astounded by the cost of how much it costs the Compassion Center and some of the other agencies that were going to the dump. In fact, $50,000 for how many months, Fred and Dion, was it six months? They had spent on dump runs. And this truck would be able to accommodate most of their garbage to save them money on the dump runs because technically they could come and use the compactor truck. Um, 
it actually is going to save money in the long run because we have to do something with the garbage issue. You know, because yes, housing the unhoused is very, very important and providing them services is very important, but we also have a whole city to listen to. And we're listening to a lot of the other people also that are saying they're tired of looking at the garbage. And we are trying to build up our economic development in this city that's going to create more sales tax, more revenue for the city, so that we would be able to have extra money that we could put towards services. So this compactor truck, you have to think of it as long term, helping out to save money in the long run, and the save money could be used towards these other services, whatever the council so desires in the future. So think more long term. Someone had asked, as I'll just tell this really quick, someone had gotten on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, you probably all saw it, where why weren't we providing a tiny house community? And the person said, you know, you could buy pallet houses for $5,000. But council member Bracco pointed out to the person, yes, we could buy tiny house pallets for 5,000. However, it would take another 20 to $25,000 to do the sewer and the electrical hookups that would make them, you know, livable for the people. So if you only have 50,000, you're housing two people. You have 100,000, you're only housing four people. So you know, it, it's where are we getting the biggest bang for our buck to, to do a tiny house community? We're talking millions. So go Mr. ahead. Council, Council yes. Yes, Council Member Bracco. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to note too that our vehicles come out of fleet. So the, the fleet money wouldn't be able to use be used for any kind of homeless services. Yeah, so what, that's what I was, I was trying to get at earlier, which we focused too much on just the dollar amount. Let Jimmy figure out where, you know, let him come back and tell us what the possibilities are for how to fund the things. All he needs to know is whether or not there's a council majority for him to bother with these items. Okay, um, Council Member Armandaris, you have something else? Yeah, so if if the trash the garbage services and the garbage truck or the com compactor are going to be used for services that are citywide not just at the homeless encampments then why would then wouldn't the money come out of fleet right yes yes i mean it could it could yeah, we're getting but, ahead of ourselves guys right and this is well weird. yeah but the, the, we're talking about, again, we're talking about homeless services and we're talking about investment, right? And so people are our best investment, right? Right. Trucks are so big and shiny and fun, big toys, but they're not an investment in our, our families and our people who need somewhere to live. Okay, then you can, right. I think it's, I think we need to do a thumbs up or thumbs down on this garbage compactor so that we can move on. I'm sure there are other things that the committee wants to suggest, and maybe someone else has something entirely different too. So on the compactor truck. Okay, so it looks to me like it's five to two. Okay, so five in favor. So that one, Jimmy is on the list. Okay, now Dion, are you council member Bracco, you have mm -hmm. uh, something else still with the, with the committee's recommendations? Yes, he does. Okay. Yes. Oh boy, I got the most popular one. <laughs> I was no dummy. <laughs> um, this has been a long and exhausting process we went through. We've met with the homeless, we've met with homeowners, business owners, service providers, and law enforcement. Our recommendation is to hire two quality of life officers. Some of their duties would, would be, but not limited to, going into the camps, and build relationships with the camp residents, working with an accompanying service providers such as county, accompanying the service providers and county mental health, probation, and others to help guide the homeless to the right services that can best address their needs. They will be seen by the homeless as someone they can trust. This helps our police gain intel about who is committing crimes in and out of the camps. They will also be able to see the needs of medical need, see the needs of 
for medical attention before it becomes too serious. The officers will also be handling most of the calls involving the homeless issues from residents and businesses, freeing up our officers to respond to more important calls. For a little perspective, our police have responded to Tompkins Court over 1,100 times for everything from loitering at area businesses to windows being shot out and everything in between. Please keep in mind this project will be a pilot project and will be reassessed yearly. Any questions? <laughs> so for clarification, are these full officers? These are not CSOs, right? No, they're full officers. Full officers, and you're talking two? Yes. Okay, Council Member Armendaris. So what other um, training and requirement um, are you are you requesting for these officers? Because for us to have two uniformed officers out of the camps, I think dedicated just to this camp, to the camps and quality of life, um, it doesn't build a community. That's a community that doesn't trust uh, our, our officers already that have often been subject to to uh, abuse and um, don't have a good relationship there. So will they be uniformed? Will they be armed? And what other kind of training are you, are you requiring of them? I, I visual vision that they will, they'll be armed, they'll be regular officers that uh, our police department will pick and train, which there is training for them to go to. Um, and, in the past, you know, the uh, Compassion Center tried an unarmed security guard. It didn't work. Um, you know, like I said, their windows have been shot out like six times. So um, there's a lot, I, I'm sure you guys found in, in your ad hoc committee, there's a lot of folks out there who have um, mental health issues. There's a lot of crisis intervention that's needed. I mean, how can we, this isn't, you know, too many people who are shot in the community by our officers or, or uh, killed or issues with abuse of power are in cases where there's mental health and crisis issues. So how is a uniformed officer armed going to uh, help versus uh, cause more tension there? Well, I, I believe that, um as the officers have more and more contact with these folks, they're gonna build relationships. They have them now. There, there's plenty of, of homeless that have relationships with our, our PD officers and give them information. Um, and, and they're gonna be accompanying the mental health uh, workers from the county or compassion center workers or anybody else that, that's going into the uh, camps to help them, they, they, they can be right there with them. Yeah, if I, if I may. Oh, yes, sorry. yes. Council yeah. Member Tobar and then Council Member LaRoma Yos. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, Council Member Armadares, you bring up a really good point there in regards to the trust. And I think this committee, when we talked about this, one of the main things that we talked about is building that trust. And, you know, when you have different officers going out there every different time, they're not going to build trust. But if you have one or two dedicated officers that are there working directly with this, you know, this community, that's where the trust begins to build. And if you have new officers or different officers coming every time, it's not going to happen. And I think that was a major part of our discussion is, and also talking with our, uh, our police officers, our police captain and police chief, you know, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for to build trust with this community, to assist them with services, to get them the help that they want or need. And that's part of why I'm in favor of this, because again, it's not about not building trust. It's, it's the complete opposite. So um, I look forward if this does pass, that that's, that will happen. Thank you. Thank you. Council member the Roman yes. Yeah. I, I think council member Tovar just really summed that up very, very well. That That, that is this is a, a community that, like every other in the city, deserves protection and deserves to have presence of law enforcement that knows them, 
and has a connection that understands them. And I think having dedicated officers who can spend time in the community, get to know the people, um, those officers will be better able to serve them at the end of the day. I think we, we, we've heard anecdotally, we've seen it in, in our city and we've also seen in other cities that oftentimes homeless camps are, can, can, be, can present any number of safety challenges for a lot of different people. And so I just I just want to see that we have that we have protection for all of those in the city, regardless of whether they are housed or unhoused. And I don't think it's an either or choice. I think that's a false distinction. I really think you can have people who know the situation, who are trained with issues around mental health, who know the community and are able to provide for the safety of all of those communities, including the homeless homeless camps as well. I, I agree, you know, with Council Member LaRoma Munoz. Um, in talking to uh, different agencies, and especially the Compassion Center, most a lot of their calls, of these 1,100 calls, were from actual unhoused living in the encampments that had crimes committed against them, and they had nowhere else to turn to, and they went to the Compassion Center to have them call the police to report it. And in talking to a lot of the members of the encampments, they'll talk about, you know, the women will tell you right up front, they cannot sleep at night because they don't know who's coming through the uh, through their tent flap. Um, they talk about the criminal element that is in all the camps and, and what goes on there. They are, I think that was the impression that moved me most when we went after these two quality of life officers was the fear that these people had for their lives and just being able to survive in the encampments. It's not a pleasant place. You know, you might be driving by there looking at the, the tents and thinking, oh, everything's really quiet, but they tell a different story once the sun goes down. They're asking for this. Um, I think of uh, these two quality of life officers, similar to the school liaison officers that we would have on our campuses. They're very special people. You do not want to pick a person that has no people skills or can't relate to what the, the um, people are going through. The school liaison officers that were very successful had those relationships with the kids and they trusted them. They talked to them. The officers did things with them. It was a strong bond. We had good ones. And then every now and then we'd get a bad one. The bad one never stayed long because there was no connection. And this is what I envisioned for the encampments that we have good bonding officers that, you know, borderline social workers. And so I don't see it as a threat. You know who it's going to be a threat to are the ones that are committing the crimes in the encampments, who are drug dealing, who are feeling unsafe, you know, okay. who are making other people feel okay. unsafe. So. Council member, yeah, okay. we need, I want to go to public comments before I go okay. around council members again. I want to hear from the public, if, if public has anything to say, and then we'll address this this one item with, with all of us. So do we have any public comments, uh, Christina? Yes, we have uh, Frida. <clears throat> Okay, three, three minutes, Frida, go ahead. Yes, so hi, thanks again for taking my call. Um, thank you, um, uh, Council Member Marks. Those, those are really well and thought out. I deal a lot with the unhomed, I deal a lot with the people in the encampments, and I 100% agree, the women are scared. But I have to say, again, when Dion just said, oh, well, the Compassion Center is gonna go walking through me with a bunch of armed, officers that's not going to make people feel comfortable because there has been retaliation Dion don't give me that look you know what I'm talking about okay that we have had this problem before there are problems there there isn't a circle of trust yet so if you're going to put brand new officers that have a brand new um view I don't want that tainted. I want their view of the residents to be their view of the residents, okay? I want it to be unbiased. I don't want it to be fair. And I also want them to understand it's a very eclectic crowd, okay? Second of all, you're gonna deal a lot with mental illness. I mean, think about the woman that was on the pavement. We dispatched all of Pit Stop, um, you know, and we ha I had a lot of personal friends. John Perales went out there. We tried to get her food and water and everything else. But at the end of the day, that's going to take a very gentle hand. I mean, that was all over 
um, Facebook. I mean, everyone was going there to help this woman. It really stopped the city in its shoes to see somebody so sick on the side of the road. And you know what made me really curious? They tagged all the people that I knew, but they didn't tag the people you keep giving all the money to. So I found that to be interesting. So again, I digress. I just really, please, no retaliation, just a nice hand with them. And if you give them the casework they need, they move along. In, in two to three weeks, that lady that, that was thrown out of safe parking, she got approved for an apartment. They just need casework, a lot of them. So thank you again for listening. Thank you. All right, next speaker. We have Mickey Scott, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Scotty Leoti. Go ahead, you have three minutes. Thank you for allowing me to comment again. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be really careful in how we look at um, an SRO program versus someone who is working with the unhoused. While there are, would be in theory, some similarities. It is absolutely important that we provide um, like a non-authoritarian figure coming out to work with these people. Um, the same thing has to go with our children. Um, so again, I just want to reiterate that it's important that we work um, with non- police authority um, to have this kind of uh, oversight. Um, it, the amount of stress that it causes these families um, by having an armed um, uniformed police officer, um, it, it's, it's detrimental um, and it creates long lasting um, negative impacts. So I, I just wanna make sure that, that we don't try to compare those things because with a lot of the history that we have on SROs um, just in the programs across the United States, um, it doesn't actually prove to be helpful to our students. So that's my comment, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other comments? None. None? Okay, then back I, to council. Sorry? I'm sorry, I see, I see Jan Bernstein has her hand up. Is that something you can't see, Christina, or what did it? She just raised her hand. She just raised her hand. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> got to get in before I go. Okay, go ahead, Jan. Hi. Um, I just wanted to echo what the speakers said and that we have a lot of success with people, people with mental illness. If we have um, a friendly, non-authoritative, non-confrontational um, interaction, and we provide connections to services. I have connected, uh, you know, people to mental health, to shelter, all in the last few days. And uh, you know, we can. All it takes is the trust. It, it takes a non-confrontational model. Um, you know, people for the most part want help. Even people with mental illness want help. Um, but they don't want to be treated with distrust. They don't want, they are very afraid of authority figures. And I would love to see a social worker or a mental health case manager or um, even a, a lay resource person, not a sworn officer, uh, somebody with mental health and trauma informed training who is hired as a case manager. And, you know, I believe that is what will get people off the street continuing the cycle of incarceration and punishment keeps people on the street. It makes them homeless longer, working with them to get the services they need and into permanent housing ends their homelessness. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm closing public comment and coming back to council and uh, council member Armendariz, you have your hand, council member Hilton, I thought you did, maybe not any anymore, okay. So Councilmember Armendariz, Councilmember Hilton, and uh, then we'll maybe put this to rest. Oh, nope, Councilmember Tobar after that, okay? Sure, uh, thank you. So I think we've seen the data across the country, programs like CAHOOTS, programs that are trauma-informed, people who are trained at crisis response, that's where you have the most success. People who are case managers and work with folks in this 
uh, demographic, they have the most success at making the unhoused people housed, right? We, we contract with a compassion center and pit stop and other, and you know, have agencies like the Office of Supportive Housing because they are experts. They are, they do do really well at the work that they do. And they're very successful at the work that they do. And if we want to instead throw money at uh, a couple officers and uh, a garbage truck, um, then our priorities are wrong. Because if you look at the data in terms of how officers, armed and uniformed officers interact with the unhomed or unhoused, how they interact with folks who have mental health issues, it's not, it's not good. It's not pretty. It's not healthy. Um, a lot of times folks end up dead. And so we, I, I think that if, you know, the cost of, of a couple of officers, you know, over $200,000 is, is money that we could better spend on case management or a more robust um, um, safe parking program or, or other services that I'm sure we'll be able to uh, call from the work that our, our committee did uh, interviewing the homeless and, and homeless services providers. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Member Hilton. Thank you, Mary Blankley. I, I'm off camera just because I'm having trouble with the internet here. Was this the final um, recommendation or is there another one after this? This is the final. Is that the final? Um, so, thank you. Um, so, I, I, I don't agree with hiring two officers and spending the money on that. Um, I'd rather see that money go towards partnering with the Office of Supportive Housing, um, you know, getting their county homeless outreach workers uh, down here and their ongoing county rapid rehousing program. Um, I'd rather see our relationships go there. And if, it, if someone could just sum up from the ad hoc committee, the, 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 the recommendation, are they, are they, which, which ones go towards homeless services versus um, those that just uh, provide like trash pickup? If we could just sort of sum that up. Um, I don't know that, if you want to answer that, Carol, you, you can. I don't know that that question was uh, phrased. Obviously, it is a matter of opinion. What is for homeless service, just like what Councilmember Armadera said. I mean, what we've got, what we need to do is, uh, uh, it's a council policy, right? It's a decision of, for all the council members to right. determine what's right. what. So, but if you want to answer that, go ahead and answer it. Well, Councilmember Hilton, you broke up a little bit. I think I can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're asking what of our four recommendations go for homelessness. These. Please keep in mind that these four recommendations came from the list of 14 that the whole council approved. So it wasn't like we sat down and made anything up. Uh, at that time, quality of life officers was approved by the majority of the council. Um, so in our mind, we wouldn't be working on something that wasn't for everybody. Um, we believe all four of our recommendations are for the unhoused. And yes, CAHOOTS is a wonderful program. I read up on it. Um, supportive housing um, programs are great. The one thing that I'm not sure about, and you may, you know, explain it to me right now, is I don't know their success rate. You know, I kept looking at CAHOOTS saying, well, out of so many people, how many got housed? How many got rehab? How many uh, made it on made it on their own and did not return to the streets? And that is something that I can't find. So if you can find it, please send it my way. Um, we are doing the 14 in chunks because obviously money's an issue and we have to keep thinking of, of money. If city team would have partnered with us, that probably would have made our top four. But as I explained a few meetings ago, their money got spent elsewhere. Um, and we haven't given up on them. If they came to us tomorrow, we would, we'd come back to you and jump on it and say, hey, let's rearrange our priorities here. But I would say all four of these items because I know I've heard, we've heard everyone's input, but I have to also respect and listen to the, P, the P, women from the homeless encampments that are very concerned for safety. Uh, I think I understand everyone's concerns about uh, again, the wrong personality that gets hired in this role. 
You can't do that. You can't go in strong arming them. You can't go in and bully them. You have to go in and build relationships. Are there officers that can do that? Yes. Yes. You have to pick the right people. Um, it's those relationships that, that we're trying to build to make those encampments safer until these people get into housing. So it's a long, complicated process. Thank you. Council Member Tovar. Thank you, Mary. Again, again, it goes back to sort of what I mentioned earlier, the reason why I was in support of this here. It's that trust building, obviously, and uh, Council Member Marks is right. We, ha we have to make sure it's the right officers. And, the, and I appreciate all the speakers that came on today, and I, and I hear you. Um, you know, one of the things that when we spoke with uh, folks from the homeless community um, that really stuck with me is those that uh, felt that they needed protection. Those that were vulnerable or could not protect themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's a large component of what this is for. This is also to not only to provide services, but also to protect those vulnerable individuals, you know. Some that have been, as many of you know, some many have been robbed, uh, injured, raped, and we cannot let that happen. And I don't see a social worker being able to do that on their own. And that's why I'm in favor of these police officers because they're going to be there to make sure that that doesn't happen. You know, again, I I I care a lot about the homeless community. Don't get me wrong, but I also care about the vulnerable individuals there that don't have protection. And that's why I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Okay, everybody's spoken multiple times, particularly Council Member Armendariz. So I think it's time that we see what the majority of the council wants to do. If the majority does not want to pursue this, we can certainly then come back to whatever else it is that you want to say. I was going right to ask with Mayor the um, I was thinking because uh, Jan and then the Compassion Center are on. Um, council Member Marks had a question about the cahoots data. Do you think either of them would be able to answer her question? Are they, they work with cahoots? Um, they're experts in the work that no, they do. Right, but this is a different, I don't, I don't know. Carol, do you think they would have an answer to that? Is that who you were planning to ask? Well, I know Compassion uh, Center does not work with cahoots. I mean, he, uh, Tim referred me to the article and I read up on it. Okay. But I don't think they have the data because they're not here in Gilroy that we can do it. And I, I just want to say one last thing real quick I to maybe kind of rest rest your you know worries is that if we don't find the right let's just pretend that you know it gets approved tonight to have two quality of life officers but if we don't find the right people for the job and and my fellow ad hoc committee members correct me if i'm wrong i don't see us hiring two people just to fill the spot i see us looking for two people that are going to address the needs that we're talking about here and if we can't find them then that money goes back and it'll be put elsewhere. So I hope that kind of allays some of your fears because our heart is with the in-house commi community. We're not gonna do things that are gonna make it worse. They already have it bad out there. We're trying yeah. to make things better for them. Okay. And, okay, all right, thank yes, you. Yes, thank, thank you. And, and no, I'm not gonna go back to public comment. That was closed. Everybody had an opportunity to speak there too. So, okay, um, council members, those in support of two quality of life officers, please do thumbs up. All right, and so that again is five to two, okay? Now, is there anything else before we leave this agenda item? Is there anything else that anyone wants to put in to, because when we go on to the, to the budget item, then we're gonna talk about where the, where th things that are not uh, available for this uh, surplus fund. So is there, was there something else someone wanted to suggest? Councilmember Roman Yos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and I just want to get some clarification. I want I had asked for the uh, the city to consider earlier using some of the federal funding that we would get as a result of COVID nineteen to address digital divide issues. So I, I just want to make sure that this is the right time to add to continue yes. that request or add a little more clarity there. I. I believe it is because again, we don't know. This is just putting into Jimmy's hands, into staff's hands. You know, what can he? Maybe he massages it and says, I, "You know, I can't." No, he comes back Understood. to us and says, "Yeah, can't do this, can't do that." But what he needs from us is direction as to what the majority would, you know, love to have come back. So, if digital divide is one of those things, then that this is the time to do it. Then, then I'll, I'll speak. Then I'll, I'll speak a little bit more and give a little more color to the comments that I had made at a previous meeting. Okay. 
one of the one of the issues that we've really seen come out as a result of COVID-19 is a widening of the digital divide. That is a gap between those who have access to uh, to high speed internet and those who don't. And the reason why this is now such a big challenge, it was always a big challenge, but now it's even worse as a result of COVID-19 is because so much of our lives have moved even more so online, whether that's working from home, whether that's telehealth, whether that's education, any number of different things now have moved online. And some of the biggest victims of the digital divide are students. We have found that those who don't have the resources are, are unable to do a lot of the homework or attend classes because everybody is still uh, you know, doing a lot of the remote learning or, or we're doing a lot of the remote learning earlier uh, this year. You know, one of the things that I would like us to look at, Jimmy, is are there ways in which the city can work to amplify its Wi-Fi uh, infrastructure and the services it provides to the public, especially in the areas of the Civic Center around the library, as well as those uh, more downtown? Because so many of the students that I, I have seen, you see them at the library working after school. That's the only access they're getting to the internet outside of, uh, outside of the classrooms. And we risk losing too many of those students in our future workforce if they don't have access to reliable high-speed internet. So I would really like us to consider, is there a way the city can invest in amplifying that Wi-Fi available in those areas of the Civic Center as well as downtown. One of the ancillary benefits if we do it downtown is that it would also benefit businesses that have been hit by COVID-19 who are always looking for those resources and digital resources like access to reliable Wi-Fi is a big business attractor. So that's what I would ask of the city that we look at that as a possibility. Okay. So Jimmy, is that clear to you what he's asking? So you would know, okay, that's all I want, want to know here. Thank you, council member. Very well said. Uh, council member Hilton, you have a hand raised? Yeah, I, I was just unclear of what, on the last thing that you said. You were talking about there's 14 recommendations and are, you're, are you asking if there's any other recommendations that we are trying to either move ahead or not? Was that what you were asking or you're talking about the specific funding? No, I was I was asking if someone had I I I know I've heard digital divide come up before, and I was just asking if that was something. I was asking if there anybody had another item besides the ones that were already mentioned that they wanted to see if there was council support to move forward. Obviously, the more items we throw at this, the fewer are going to be able to be accommodated. We we all need to know that as we're doing our thumbs up things. But if there is something you would like to address this council on that has that we have talked about before that we can use the surplus money on, then this is the time. Okay, so I'd like to suggest that we um, explore item number 14 and I'll, I'll read it just to, to make sure everybody knows it. Okay, but just a second, because if that's a different item now than what council member LaRomagnos was talking about, we need to do thumbs up, thumbs down on that. That's fine, okay. no, just go ahead. You can do thumbs up, thumbs down for Peter. I understand what you're oh, saying. Okay, go ahead. and then come back doing. to me. <laughs> okay, and then I will, I'll go to public comment then later on on this and on what council member hilton's doing that way we do that at once okay so council if anybody would like um uh, attention put whatever whatever staff is able to come back to us to say that they can do on digital divide uh, this is a time to put your thumbs up and that one looks unanimous okay good so we're going on with that now council member hilton your item thank you um, so it would be uh, item number 14 that was a part of the ad hoc recommendations. And that's, uh, I'll read it off. It says partner with the County Office of Supportive Housing and establish a partnership to have access to their programs and services. And it says that city staff will look into the cost for partnership and what services will be provided if Gilroy participates. Okay. Do you want to elaborate? Does anybody want to talk about what that exactly means to your understanding? Do you know what that means, Council Member Hilton? I could read more into it if everybody does not understand, but I'm sure the ad hoc committee understands it was one of your recommendations. No, that wasn't. 13 and 14 came from uh, you and Council Member Armendaris. That's what I remember as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I would like to hear more about it. Okay. 
Um, so the first one would be to partner with the county. Um, this would be our share for county homeless outreach workers. They would conduct interviews and assessments, medical and social risk factors of homeless on the streets in Gilroy. And the next one would be partner with the county. This is Office of Supportive Housing. Uh, for our share of the program of ongoing county rapid rehousing program, it's a homeless prevention. Financial rental assistance is also a part of it. Program with families, targeting families with, uh, with children in school, um, within the school district that are at risk for homelessness. So it sounds like it's a rental assistance program then, is that correct? It's part of it. And, and that rapid rehousing program, they're actually probably one of the ones that'll be working with our safe parking program as well. So those are two that I, that, that I wanted to bring up and suggest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any other uh, comments from any of the council? No? Okay, then Christina, can we go to public comment? If there are any other, if we have any public comments now on the, these last two items that we've not already discussed, that I've not already, not already had public comment on. Yes, we have uh, Frida raising her hand, you may speak. Okay, go ahead, Hi. Frida, three minutes. So I, I hate to keep chiming in, but the unhomed and this whole ad hoc committee, you put so much work into it. And I so appreciate all of the work that you guys did going out to the encampments and everything that um, effort went into the ad hoc committee. The thing that I'm troubled with is you have $300,000 to serve to kind of solve a, um, a pandemic of sorts, okay? Homelessness is the highest it's been because of COVID. And the only money you're directly giving to the unhomed is $50,000 to open up safe parking. I mean, you're spending two, they can't live in a garbage truck, okay? That's great, but right now, I'm, Mayor Blankley, I know your, your background's accounting. And right now when you have a crisis, you need to spend money today and you can't think about long-term investments and toys. Right now, the, the entire town is telling you, we're brought to our knees basically, uh, with the unhome crisis, because we really don't have um, a good enough um, center of casework to go through the amount of people that we have. The money would much better be spent on casework, um, drug counselors, and actual direct help to these people. They, I mean, it's great that the rest of the community is not going to see their garbage, but you know, um, Dion said himself that this isn't only going to help the homeless. So really someone could, should cost share this item with us. If this is 300,000 is going towards um, helping this crisis, I don't think a garbage truck is, is really doing uh, it justice. And I think that protecting that money is like a fiduciary duty that you need to hold on to every dollar and, and buying a long-term asset when you have a very, very obvious problem right here and now seems so counterintuitive to me that this is what the ad hoc committee came, $300,000 and only 50,000 on it on, on direct services. The rest are armed guards and garbage. So basically you need armed people and, and just the garbage and the rest of it's gonna go away. This is so, I, I'm so sad to see that these were the recommendations. You guys all worked so hard Kudos to all of you. But when people drive by the encampments, only casework is going to get these people homes. Casework, mental health counselors, social workers, and housing experts. The rest of this is so, I'm so sad. But anyway, I do appreciate all your, all your hard work. I was just shocked. I'm really just shocked. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Okay, reminding uh, the commenters that this is supposed to be on the digital divide and on uh, partnering with the county for uh, access to services, conduct interviews, rent assistance, and whatever else Council Member Hilton said. He spoke really fast. I couldn't get it all down. Okay, so are there any other public comments on those items? Seen, seen none. Okay. So then back to closing the public hearing, back to council, council member Marks. I, I just want to remind the last speaker and you know maybe other people think the same thing. The $300,000 that we're talking about is not just for the unhoused. That is extra money that this council 
can decide how, what to spend it on. We are giving suggestions and recommendations on how to fund it. So please keep that in mind in case anyone keeps thinking we have the 300,000 and this is all that we're spending it on. No, no, we're not. That's why we're just asking, we're like, you know, 50,000 of it because we know that there are other items that need to be funded for the for all the citizens of Gilroy, not just the unhoused. Okay, any other comments from council? Then I, I would just like to say to what uh, council member Hilton has just proposed, I mean, it, 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 it sounds, sounds like something good, but it's just too vague for me. I don't understand what exactly we would do with what, and I don't even know how we would look into that because that's not within the city's control. It's a suggestion to partner with the county for something that then involves a partnership with, with the county. And I don't, I don't understand how, how, how we have to jurisdiction over what that is. That's, so it's my lack of understanding on that one. Um, Council member Armandaris, would you like to speak? Yeah, from what Council Member Hilton said, I see it as um, the beginning of a a partnership like um, that would evolve into something like uh, Rebecca Garcia does in Morgan Hill, right? So um, it could be seed money to fund a project together, but if if if, if we don't prioritize it and we, if we don't vote for it, then we can never get there, right? It's like the beginning yeah. steps to something like that. Totally correct. Just it's again, the more things we put in here, then the less likely any of these things are going to be able to happen. Council Member Tovar. Thank you. No, and then again, um, to Council Member Hilton, I, I thank you for bringing that up. Um, and I'm all in favor of, of partnering. But again, I think I, I also I'm kind of it's kind of vague here. I'm not sure exactly what what it would consist of. I mean, if I had more information, it's something that says, yeah, it's something that we can do. I'm all in favor of it, but I'm not sure exactly what we're asking here in, in regards to dollar amounts. And Council Member Armadares just mentioned, um, you know, hiring somebody like Morgan Hill. Well, that's, you know, close to $200,000 that we're talking about there. So I'm just trying to get more information. Um, I, I like what you're talking about. I just need more information to be able to say, yes, okay. I'm in favor of this. Thank you. All right. Well, so let's let Council Member Hilton uh, speak. Okay, so you all spoke with Rebecca Garcia, and she told you about the partnership with Office of Supportive Housing, correct? And how outreach workers that are from the Office of Supportive Housing are making contact with those in the creeks and getting them in the database. I'm, I'm pretty sure she talked to you about that. The other cities in the county do the same exact thing. That's what this is. There is no specific dollar amount because it's it's basically whatever you can pay. Morgan or Morgan Hill, I believe, said that they had like, it was like $70,000. Here's what I have. What can you do to help us get consistent staff in our creeks contacting at the homeless? Because right now we're relying on pit stop outreach and volunteers to put them in the database because they're trained to do that. And that's great. But that's relying on volunteers. And I know the Compassion Center um, from talking to them too, you know, they, they don't always have time to go out and make contact and get these folks into the database, you know, the VITSAT database um, as well. So that's what this partnership would, would, would be about. It's a cost sharing partnership. Um, and I mean, we can't really go too much into more details on funding because we're not supposed to be. No, right. Doing that. No. But hopefully that, hopefully that clears up a little bit. And I'm sure the council, the ad hoc committee, I know you guys talked about this. You had to have. Okay. So it sounds like it's, there's no, right. We, we aren't doing dollar amounts or a lot of things because we don't know what it's going to do with all this stuff. And it's not a, there's no set number for it anyway. Like you said, one city can say, this is how much we can afford to put into this. What services can we get for that? Okay, um, Jimmy, are you there? Yeah, I, I'm just wondering, is there some, would you like to say something on this? Like, what would this mean to you if the council said, if there was a majority that said, we wanna look into this, what, what would be the step that you would have to take to even address this? Well, I, I, I think that, and I, I think Councilmember Hilton points out something that is is very much what we did learn from Morgan Hill because the committee and uh, Rebecca Garcia, uh, it, it is very much a la carte in some ways. And so if council wants to see what those options are for the a la carte menu, then I think that's something that's very doable. And uh, we can bring that back to you, say for X amount of dollars, you get Y amount of services. And then 
and then deliberate uh, what's the priority, what's most important. But I, I don't think this is a, initially a cost, it's, it's time. And, uh, but uh, to get that information to you, if that's what the, the majority of council wants, that's, that's something we could do. Time. I'm first gonna say, oh, a la carte, sounds good, but it does always come down to time, doesn't it? Okay. All right, council members, I, I guess this is time to vote. I'm not gonna be first this time. <laughs> Did we, did we have public comment on this subject yet? Yes, yes, we did. We absolutely did. And I just closed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd be in favor of that. Yeah, I kind of am too. I know it's time, so I'm, I hope you can just kind of control the time because it sounds, you know, I like the a la carte. I'm, I'm talking even though I have really no business talking. We're voting right now, but we have a majority. Yeah, so let's, let's go with it. it um, See what, I mean, you're gonna massage it, Jimmy, the way you're massaging all of these things and see what uh, what possibly comes back. Yay, fun. Okay, oh my goodness. Are we done with this item? Everybody? Okay, ignored that, that makes me feel great because now we can go into the budget knowing that all this stuff we've just hashed out. And hopefully when it comes to the budget side now, things are, things are more clear, so. We are now on item 11C, adopt fiscal year 2022 and 2023 operating and capital budgets, GAN appropriations limit for fiscal year 2022, position control list and city goals, priorities, legislative agenda and departmental work plan. I wanna start, I wanna preface this for everybody because it's easy to, to not be clear that what we have in our packets, right? What, what the public has seen in our packets, what we see in our packets, this is staff's recommendation based on the accumulation of items that we have given staff with their direction. There is nothing in this budget that is funding an SRO for the schools. In fact, Gilroy Unified is not even requesting um, anything for SROs. It does include an economic development manager, which we have been saying that we need and we have been trying to hire, but then COVID hit and we definitely need that um, need that. It, it does not reduce anything to recreation in terms of the subsidy that comes out of the general fund. And it has the money for the streets that we've all already told staff we want allocated so that our PCI, Pavement Condition Index, does not continue to decline. So with that preface, I hand it over to Harjot to do the report. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council Members, and uh, my fellow uh, uh, city teammates. My name is uh, Herjot Sanga, Finance Director. I'll be presenting you uh, the fiscal year 22 and 23 budget adoption. I do have a presentation. Uh, do let me know if you're able to see my screen or not. Yes. Perfect. All right. Okay, just a, a little background on the uh, budget development process. Uh, we are here now in June, uh, uh, you know, before you to adopt the budget for fiscal year 22 and 23. The process really started back in February of 21 when the city council held its uh, strategic planning workshop, uh, followed by a second session in March where the council reviewed and discussed the council's policy program, the Vision 2030 document, the goals, priorities, as well as uh, the departmental work plans for the two fiscal years. Um, in May, the council approved the conceptual plan for the ARPA dollars, which the city is uh, slated to get about $10.9 million and are programmed uh, to the most extent uh, in the proposed budget, uh, which we're presenting to you. Uh, and on May 24th, we held a, a budget study session. On May 25th, we, the city administrator and I did hold uh, a separate community budget meeting as well. Budget highlights. The recommended budget includes the uh, uh, very high level, the conceptual plan expenditures of the 10.9. Uh, which were slated to get from the ARPA monies. The money is really uh, there to act as a bridge funding for the services uh, as we kind of continue our economic recovery from the pandemic. Uh, we'll be focusing on our economic development efforts. Uh, we'll also be uh, doing some key infrastructure investments, uh, most notably uh, in our streets area, technology as it relates to you know ERP, LMS, which the council previously approved. We'll continue to roll those out in addition to others. Uh, we're doing some public safety areas such as fire engines uh, for the Civic Center. Uh, we're also looking to do a HVAC 
uh, system upgrade and for enterprise area water and wastewater, most notably we're looking to do our uh, treatment plan expansion uh, at the SCRA. Okay, uh, proposed citywide budget uh, for the sources and uses. We for fiscal year 22, the total citywide sources are $187.2 million and the uses are 170. 4.3 for fiscal year 23, you'll see the sources are 131.7 million and the uses are 155.6. The notable areas of uh, uh, city expenses or operations are generally in the general fund you see up top and then our enterprise fund uh, operations. Again, you know, uh, the sources and the uses do include the ARPA dollars and uh, in fiscal year 22, uh, you'll see the large source um, in the enterprise fund, which is a 78.3. That does include the uh, expected $50 million uh, bond proceeds uh, to finance the treatment plant, which we'll talk a little bit more about later tonight. As far as our positions go, we are pro uh, proposing to maintain the 258 positions over the two fiscal years, uh, which do include the positions that we're proposing uh, to add back as part of the ARPA. Uh, money stacked as the bridge. Uh, talking a little bit about the general fund, uh, revenues for fiscal year 22 are projected to be at 61.1 million. Um, and that does include the second installment of the ARPA monies, the first one we have received already um, in May of this year. Uh, for fiscal year uh, 23, the revenues are projected to be 56.3 million. And 56.3 million is uh, more in line with what our base general fund revenues were pre-COVID. So we are expecting to recover to pre-COVID levels by the end of the second fiscal year. And on the expenditure side for fiscal year 22 uh, in the general fund budget is $55.9 million. And for fiscal year 23, it is 57.4. Uh, the notable expenses here are generally the personnel expenses, as you can see, over uh, around 70% for 20 two and uh, 72 for 23. As we are a uh, full service city, we do provide our police, fire, uh, you know, services, um, including development and general governance. Uh, talking about the general fund forecast a little bit, the city's reserve policy does require us to maintain a 30% of annual operational expenses as a reserve target. It does include 20% as the reserves and 10% of that is the economic uncertainty. Um, as you can see uh, on this chart, and during the fiscal year 20, the city strategically utilized its economic uncertainty to help kind of weather the economic impacts of the ongoing pandemic. Um, from fiscal year uh, 21 onwards and through fiscal year 27, we do project to maintain the required reserve targets uh, in the forecast. Again, um, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that that is due to the ARPA funding, which, uh, which does provide uh, a, a bridge and also kind of help stabilize the budget, if you will, as we kind of continue our economic activity. Um, as far as uh, commissions and committees, um, subsequent to the budget study session, which was held on May 24th, um, staff did review and add back in uh, certain budgetary requests from the various commissions and uh, committees as outlined on this uh, slide. The notable areas really relate to uh, training or development and or uh, outreach uh, and community engagement. Um, and then the last item are, or the slide here is uh, certainly the actions we're asking you to take tonight is, uh, you know, we're recommending that the council open and close the public hearing, adopt the fiscal year 22 and 23 operating and capital budgets, adopt the appropriations limit for fiscal year 22 and adopt the position control list as well as approve all the policies, um, the goals, priorities and the, and the work plans. Um, uh, you know, as the council is aware, this is a, uh, a approval of this budget will ensure come July 1, we're seamlessly transitioning into a new fiscal year and, uh, and the council is aware periodically throughout the year, you know, staff does return back to council with any as we have opportunities and other recommendations to make budgetary amendments to the budget um, to program additional dollars and so forth. So that uh, concludes my report and I am happy to answer any questions. I believe you're uh, mute, uh, Mayor Planker. Thanks, sorry, God. all right. 
Thank you for telling me. Uh, I could go to public comment first or um, council discussion. Do um, If someone doesn't have a burning question, I would love to go to public comment and see what's burning there. Okay, all right. So uh, do we have any comments, Christina? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. See none. You are kidding me. Wow. Okay. I know. Council, any uh, any discussion here? Council Member Brotho. I'm ready to make a motion to adopt the resolution of the City Council of the City of Gilroy setting appropriation li limits for fiscal year 22. I'll okay. second that. Okay. So may, I, may, I, uh, Madam May, before we vote, um, this is actually a public hearing. So uh, it would it would be helpful yeah, okay. if you just ask for public comment, if you'd open the public hearing, ask for public comment again, and then close the public hearing. Oh, I thought that's just, just as that. a formality because it's more than public comment this time. Oh, okay. Open the public hearing. Are there any public comments in this public <laughs> hearing? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. Seeing none. Okay, so I'm now closing the public hearing. Okay. Thank you for humoring me. I okay, it. we have a motion by Council Member Bracco, seconded by Council Member Laromagnos for the first of the items, which is adopting a resolution as Council Member Bracco just read. Um, I don't know if anybody needs an ex explanation on that. It's a little bit of a moot thing for Gilroy because it's, it's a, an appropriation limit that we don't get anywhere near, but it's a formality that we have to approve. So. With that, um, how about a roll call vote? Council Member Armandariz? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Hilton? Yes. <coughs> Council Member Laura Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. All right, that passed unanimously. So moving on to Item three, okay, no, so I see hands now. So Council Member Bracco, was that that you didn't put it down or do you have a question? I didn't put it down. Okay, Council Member Hilton. Thank you, Mary Blankley. Um, I, I have a couple of, well, actually I have a couple of clarification questions that I have for staff. Should I start with that first? Is that okay? I'll yeah. Um, so, so I just want to be, let's see. So right now we're on number three, right? Which is yes. adopting the operating budget. Right. Um, so there is not going to be any aquatics this summer, correct? Like the public should be aware of that, correct? Okay. That is correct, Council Member Hilton. Okay. Um, the other item that I wanted to bring to everyone's attention and seeing if I could get um, some consensus is that the Gilroy Bicycle Pedestrian Commission um, they actually wanted $2,000 for training. This is something that was authorized um, last budget cycle as well. Um, they have three new members that are on there. And um, one of the big main uh, conferences they go to is a statewide called the Cal Bike Conference. Um, we attended it uh, uh, two years ago. And that is coming up again in April. Um, and it's not going to be held close by. Um, so there's some expenses training. Um, so last time what they did is they were able to at least do $2,000 for one year and $1,000 for the subsequent year. So that was, that's a change that I'd like to see if we can get some consensus to, um, you know, to be able to put in this operating budget. And I'll stop there because I have, I have, I have one other item that I'd like to uh, mention as well. Okay. So regarding that, that one item he's asking, is there, um, do we know, I don't know if anybody's here who could tell us, um, does that commission have a, does that commission spend more than other commissions? Because I think. No, no, Mayor, actually not really. They're one of the few uh, commissions that actually have their own revenue source uh, okay. due to measure B. So uh, they, they actually have money. Very unusual. So they, do they have money to do what he's just asking here though, this 2000? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> No, you can't use, you, no, no, you can't use travel and training expenses for Measure B. I'm not, yeah, right. Council Member Hilton, yeah. I'm not suggesting that you use Measure B. I'm suggesting that you, there would be money available for that training to occur. Wait, Jimmy, are, I'm, I'm a little okay, confused so we too. Can... I know, I'm a little confused too. Are, are, you, are you saying, 
Jimmy, are you suggesting that we go ahead at that, that, that this request is something we can accommodate? Yes. Okay. Thank you. My, my point <laughs> was, is that I don't need a council approval to spend a thousand dollars. That's my point. Got it. Cause I had a question. Mayor. Okay. Council, my hand up, but... I know. Okay. <laughs> you guys, I got it. Okay. Council member Armandaris has her hand up and then uh, council member Tovar. Now that I know you want to speak, you'll be next. Okay. Council member Armandaris. And yeah, if you can just... come back to me too, I still. Oh, that's right. Time. He had another question. <laughs> but well, maybe let, you let, should... Let's do a couple right. rounds. I'm fine with that, Miss. Okay. Mayor. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to ask if other if there's other um, commissions or committees that have requested anything, uh, maybe Jimmy could share that with us. Yeah, there are numerous um, requests, and that was in part in your packet, and many of them were in the hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars, and so we focused on training, education, and outreach as the ones that we recommend approving, and those are all listed in the slideshow that Harjo did. Uh, so the other ones that are included, but they were so large that we really just they weren't something that we felt as staff. They could come up as a CIP or something in a future discussion, but they are in your packet, so you're aware of them. But uh, the majority of what we re re approved were followed that small criteria. Okay, thank you, Council Member Tovar. Okay, Jimmy, sorry, because um, and I appreciate Council Member Hilton advocating for this one specific or particular commission. But going back, Jimmy, to your uh, comments, because. I, I'm looking at everyone. We should be advocating for all all these commissions, but you know, you've said that they've sort of threw requests at you, but they're in the large dollar amounts, correct? The ones that were not included in staff recommendations were most mostly the large dollar amount. For example, two hundred and fifty thousand, three hundred thousand. We we as staff were not going to forward those and recommend that council approve those. In many instances, they end up in a CIP down right. the road. I think the largest one that we approved was the 50,080A for senior. That was already in the city CIP program. So that was a, that that's an acknowledgement that that's something that that group wants, but it's also an acknowledgement that it was already included in the CIP program. And I guess my only concern is that again, that we're advocating for one specific, you know, group here. I mean, I would be in favor of we, we, you know, divided equally amongst everybody, you know, $2,000 for everybody, for whatever, you know, I'm just trying to see how we can be, you know, uh, fair for every group. You know, obviously you have one council member speaking regarding one group. I mean, so I don't know. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get a be better idea or sense how we can make sure that we're supporting all the commissions. Thank you. Okay. Council member Hilton, thank you for uh, your indulgence. Um, I, I just, I'll briefly comment about, because I was a commissioner for the last four years, and I was very grateful when this council um, back then decided to actually even consider training uh, a budget. Um, but I'll tell you, and I still watch all the commission and committee meetings, those, those training dollars that you passed on were not used by anybody except for our commission. Um, they were used by Parks and Rec Commission because they attended something and brought value back, but the other commissions do not use it. So I mean, it's one thing to budget it, but they already knew that they had this available to them and none of them advocated, except for those that you saw that they brought forward, none of them advocated that they wanted to continue training or do that personal development. Um, so I think that's why you're seeing it come back now, um, not as like a full blanket for, for everybody. Um, okay, so I'm done with that. Would you like, can I suggest another amendment yes. or are we still, okay. Yes. Um, the other one that, that I wanted to bring up and I'm not suggesting that we use any general fund money. I'm not suggesting um, that we change the budget at all. What I'm proposing is something that, that is a little different and has never been done before. And what that is, is that there's two of our commissions recommended a CIP project to get funded. And specifically that was the, uh, um, 900 610, which is the Christmas Hill Park Trail Wayfinding Signage. What I'm proposing is that this actually has a cost of less than $100,000. So it's not even something that, that Jimmy would have to bring back to us for approval. What I'm suggesting is be able to put language in there so that if we have a surplus in any of our funds, not general funds, but the other funds, if there's money that is not spent, because I, I can guarantee that probably this year, at the end of this year, there's going to be just items that we did not spend on the public. Is there a willingness to be able to, and I, I would suggest this for all of you, to be able to put in items like that so that way at the end of the year, those items can get funded when other items never got, got pushed forward. And like I said, there's two commissions that have 
that have done this. I was a part of the program um, and the outreach that, that, that was a part of this. Um, and so that's my, my suggestion for this one. And I, I have one more. Oh, <laughs> you said one more last time. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, I don't see any other hands. I know I have a comment. Okay, Rebecca Armadier, I have, but I would like to comment on that too. And then I'll come back to you since I haven't spoken. Um, I, I understand that completely. I see that as a premature commitment. However, I think if we have surplus funds, who knows what the situation is in, in, in our Gilroy world at that time that we might want that money for. If you can always bring that up at the end, if that money's there, but I, I personally do not, would not want to write in things that commit us uh, for money that may, may come available later when something else, like something within our workforce, for example, that we have all these open items on and things we want to do come up. So that's just how I look at that. It's, a, it's just a premature commitment. Okay, Council Member Armendariz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I like what Council Member Hilton had to um, propose in terms of pre-approving stuff because oftentimes, um, and I've heard it from uh, many of you who've been on the Council for, for years, is that we have an idea, we approve it, um, you know, something that the community has come, has brought to us, and then it falls off, it falls off the, the our, you know, our um, scope, right? It just falls off. We don't know what happened to that idea, and um, it never gets funded. It never gets executed, and so I think if we do something like pre-approving stuff, if, you know, a certain um, um, level of, of funding is reached or a certain level of um, of leftover money has reached, uh, we can make sure that things don't fall off, right? That, that things that are placed on the back burner are approved, um, things that meet our community's needs and, um, and they stay within our radar. So I, I support the idea. Right, but that would just, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna say there's all kinds of things we could put on that list then, like, like making a dent in our PERS debt. For example, I mean that's that's where I'm going. Is that's why I say it's premature because those are big decisions for for money that does, shouldn't get done like like this. Okay, Council Member Hilton, you have a, another one. Yeah, well, just to follow up on that, I mean, I know that this there's got to be something that that Jimmy or even Harjo has been thinking about of having some sort of end of year surplus policy, right? I mean, we, we are pre planning for the next two years, just like you said you know, Mayor, uh, we're, we're going to say that we're doing all this stuff. We are, in fact, pre-planning. We are, in fact, I mean, our priorities might change a year from now. So all this is, is, is it's just plugging in something on top of that that we can all come to a consensus with. And like I said, I think, I think everybody should come up with an idea because you all have been working with your constituents in the city for, you know, for different projects and you all developed that, that entire CIP program, especially. Um, and all we're saying is if there's a surplus in the funds, I'm not talking about general fund money, surplus in the funds that can go to a project that benefits the community. And so that's why I brought up, um, brought up that item. And I, I don't know, I, this has never been done before. So maybe Harjo or Jimmy wanna, wanna weigh in on it too, because I have another one that I wanted to throw in there um, as well. And that's, um, you know, that's, to, that's to support that BMX proposal if it comes back and if it gets approved, I would like to see some surplus funds. If we don't use the funds, or maybe that, maybe that, maybe we can use this when, when we see the end of year uh, budget for this current cycle, if there's extra funds left over, and this is being below the threshold that Jimmy would even have to come back for council approval, less than a hundred thousand um, dollars. You know, I'd like to see $50,000 go towards, um, towards the cost of that. Um, towards the cost of ongoing, you know, construction and, and maintenance. And, and like I said, both these items are, are the benefit of the community. It activates a part in our park system that um, is not activated currently. Thank you. Jimmy, you have a, a comments? So if yeah, not, I, I, I do. Okay. Uh, I believe that what we've struggled with, and it's not really a struggle, I'd say, is that the opportunity cost that we lose when money's left over at the end, end of the year, to me, outweighs what the actual goodness of having the extra money left over. So for example, we intend to have a million dollars left over this year. That was a million dollars of service that we didn't provide. 
And so we have had some considerations about, do we bring to council the thought of a, of a year end fund balance policy? And how does that money get separated? Once we've met our 30% reserves, what, what above that do we do? Do we just let it accumulate? Do we let the pot grow larger and larger? Because we've done that before. And if you recall a few years ago, we spent you know several million dollars on uh, the section 115, um, some capital improvement projects, all those items. So it, it may behoove the council to really sit down and think about how you wanna handle the money that you have left over every year, because you almost always do. And so do you then wanna say, well, we should use that money to fund X amount of dollars towards you know, section 115 or X amount of dollars towards the CIP program. I, I, I think that's a very valuable conversation for all of us to have because we, we all wanna provide services and, and the extra money in the bank above our reserve level is not really benefiting us uh, too, too much. So I certainly um, would, uh, would, would be happy to bring that to council at some point. Um, as for the other uh, things that council member uh, Hilton suggested, uh, you know, for wayfinding and, um, and for the BMX, um, I think, uh, you know, those are council decisions. They are within my authority, but right now I just don't have a project, you know, in front of me, especially from the BMX. So uh, when, if we do enter into a, an agreement with the BMX, Garlic City BMX, then at that time we should consider if the city, what the city wants to do financially, and that would be part of that agreement, I would assume. So um, I hope that helps. Yeah, because I know I, I certainly want to see that forest fire station go in. And then if we have extra money, I'd like it to go towards streets because we already know that what we are budgeting is just to not go down in, in PCI and we're already likely below 60. So that's why these are these are big discussion points if we have leftover money. Uh, Council Member Hilton again. Okay, and then maybe someone might be ready for a motion. Okay. I'll Council make a motion. I, I'm going to try to throw this out there if there's no other discussion. Okay, council members, uh, Bracco, Loromanos, no? Okay. So we already have the motion on the floor? No, we, we voted no. on that motion. That was just the GAN limit. Now we're waiting on a motion for adopt a res. Did somebody make that motion? No, I'm gonna make I it. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, sorry. You good? Okay, council member Hilton, what, what is your motion? So I'm gonna, I'm going to make a motion that we adopt a resolution of the city of city council of city of Gilroy adopting the operating and capital improvement budget for fiscal year 2022 fiscal year 2023 and appropriating proposed expenditures for the purposes set forth in the budget. And I'm going to add the language that if we have a surplus at the end of either 2022 or 23 that we put it towards the Christmas Old Trail uh, wayfinding signage in our CIP plan. That's my motion. Second. Okay, so um, if there's no discussion, is there a discussion? We need a roll call vote. On, I, I do not support that addition. So I'm going to say that now. I don't know how other council members feel. Is there a discussion or we uh, are ready to vote? You can go with that. Sorry? Ready to vote. Okay, Carol, you have something? Yes, okay. I do. Yes, okay. I, do. I, I was just sitting here thinking about it. Again, it's one more thing we rushed through real quickly without thinking about. And I liked your motion, Council Member Hilton, until, until you got to the specific item. It's not that I'm against the Christmas Hill signage. I just feel like if there's extra money, then at that time, we should make a wish list of the projects that come forth, because maybe at that time, there's going to be something better to spend the money on than the signage, you know, that might be more important to the whole community. That's my only problem with it. So if you'd like to make an amendment to your motion and pull out the, the Christmas Hill signage, I have no problem supporting that. But when you get specific, it's going to be a no vote for me. Okay, Council Member Armandar, oh wait, I'm sorry, Council Member Tovar, maybe you were first, and then Count, yeah, no, yeah no, were you I'm... first, and then it was Council Member Laura Munoz, and then it was Council Member Armandaris. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, 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 thank you, Council Member Hilton. I agree with Council Member Marks. I would be totally in favor of supporting this if, again, <clears throat> we weren't specific on one exact, you know, the, the exact thing that you mentioned, but you know, we could re-examine it down the road and see where it may be better utilized. It might be exactly what you're saying, but 
I don't want to commit to something right now. I would rather leave it open and we can come back and have that discussion and vote on it. And, um, you know, again, I'm not closing the door on it. I just would be more open to if it's something that we can have further discussion later on in regards to where the money goes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Member Leroy Munoz. Yeah, I'm going to return just to a theme that I had raised earlier, which is, again, I, I don't think that we kind of have a lot of economic certainty as we come out of the um, out of the COVID crisis. I think that for us, if there is a surplus, if there are extra resources at the end of the year, I think it's it's fine to take stock of them at the time. I, I just don't like tying our hands this early. Right, right. Councilmember Armendaris? Yeah, I think the, the motion is specific to a surplus and We've all had the opportunity to think about these types of projects. And so um, it's not a slippery slope, right? I think it is specific. And if you support it, then you should vote for it. Thank you. Right, Rebecca, okay. uh, Council Member Armadares, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm, I'm trying to be open here. And again, I, I'm not saying no to this. I would just rather you know, leave it open and then have this discussion later on. So I mean, right. being specific, I think just sort of ties our hands a little bit. But again, not to say I wouldn't be in favor later on. I would just rather let's, you know, let's move forward. And if it's the right, you know, place to put the money, I'm all in favor for. So that's all. Okay, so thank you. Council Member Hilton, are you amending your motion or not? Not amending. Not amending. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor um, as Council Member Hilton uh, proposed. Uh, so roll call vote so that we can then move on to a, another motion. Oh, what about public comment? We already did that. It's been closed. For this particular item? It's the, the whole agenda be, item, yes. But the public hearing has been opened and closed. And we saw that there is no specific public comment necessary on each motion. Right. Okay. Christina, can you do roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Edmundaris? Yes. Council Member Bracco? No. Council Member Hilton? Aye. Council Member Loro Munoz? No. Council Member Marks? No. Council Member Tovar? No. And Mayor Blinkley? No. Okay, so with that, do we have another motion? Yes, I'm Council ready. Member Bracco? Yes. I make a motion to adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Gilroy adopting an operating and capital improvement program budget for fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23 and appropriating proposed expenditures for the purposes set forth in the budget. And I will second that again. Okay, so this is a motion by Council Member Bracco and seconded by Council Member Leroy Munoz. Roll call vote. Council Member Edwin And we chose him. Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Hilton? Aye. Council Member Leroy Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. Council Member Blankley. Yes, and that passed unanimously. Thank you all. Okay, the fourth, oh, sorry, Council Member Bracco. I make a motion to adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Gilroy establishing the position control list for fiscal years 22 and 23. All right, is there a second? Second. We can still have to Okay, so motion made by Council Member Bracco, seconded by Council Member Marks. Is there any discussion on this item? I just have a clarifying question for staff. Okay, yeah. Um, how, how many positions are we down uh, to pre-pandemic? We're not bringing everybody back with this fiscal year, the next two years. Do we know how many positions were still down from pre-COVID? I didn't see that listed on there. I believe, Leanne, correct me if I'm wrong, we were at 285 pre-COVID, and now we're at 258. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. Oh, uh, Councilmember Armendaris, I just saw your hand. Thank you. Is it number down due to um, just vacancies and process, and process of hiring? No, the, the number that I quoted you is the 258 includes vacancies. Those are the authorized positions. So, um, no. Hmm. Okay. All right. I think it's time for roll call. Councilmember Edmundaris? Yes. Councilmember Bracco? Yes. 
Council Member Hilton? Aye. Council Member Laura Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. All right, that leaves one more item. If anybody would like to, Council I'll Member make, Bracco. I'll make a motion to approve fiscal year 22-23 city goals, priorities, legislative agenda, and department mental work plan. All right, is there a second to that motion? Seconded yes. by Council Member Tovar. Is there any uh, discussion on this item? I just have one quick discussion. Yes, point. go right um, ahead. When we, when we uh, post this on the website, can we also let our commissions and committees know what our priorities have changed? Because several of them, when they were um, giving you guys suggestions on the uh, on budget items, they were basing it off of what our priorities were listed from the last council, and they were not following the process be between February strategic planning until now. So many of them were basing items like on downtown revitalization when that's not listed any longer. So if we could just pass that along to them so that they're a hundred percent clear on, on, so they can adjust on their work plans. Thank you. Okay. Are you working with the commissions council member? Am I working with them? Are you working with, yeah, I just, I don't do, know, I I'm watch their, do I watch their meetings and, and no, that's and not what I meant. That's, them? Yes. <laughs> okay, you're talking about from watching their meetings. Okay, so I just want to make sure that our commissions are independent of council members, right? They're not supposed to be uh, being being influenced by council members. They're supposed to be independent bodies that we look to for a whole separate viewpoint than what we do we do here and a whole separate public comment period. Okay, so um, but that I think roll call vote on this. Councilmember Edmundaris. Yes. Councilmember Bracco? Yes. Councilmember Hilton? Aye. Councilmember Laura Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. All right. That passed unanimously too. Gosh, thank you, everybody. That was a lot to get through. All right. Item 13 Introduction of New Business. Approval of issuance of wastewater revenue bonds, series 2021A. Harjo, you are on again. Yes, ma'am. Good evening again. Harjo Sanga, the finance director. I'll be presenting the item before you. And let me share my screen again. And if you could just please confirm that you're able to see my screen. Yes. Perfect. All right, the, uh, the item before you is the approval of the issuance of wastewater revenue bonds, uh, Series 2021A. A little background, the city uh, owns and operates a wastewater collection system, which has over about 14,000 connections and has about 163 miles of pipeline in the ground. The wastewater is then transmitted to the treatment facility, which is owned um, and operated by the South County Regional Wastewater Authority, also known as SCRA, uh, which is a joint powers authority between the cities of Gilroy and Morgan Hill. Uh, the city of Gilroy has a 58.1% uh, uh, majority interest in that JPA. The treatment plan is embarking on a long awaited treatment plan expansion project, uh, which the SCRA board awarded for construction on May 3rd, um, 2021. For the city's collection system, uh, following the general plan uh, update last year, uh, the city is updating its wastewater system master plan, which is expected to yield additional capital needs and so forth. Um, so the city um, is expected to finance uh, the, uh, the treatment plan expansion project, and it does so time to time utilizing the Gilroy Public Facilities Financing Authority, which is a JPA created to finance any capital improvements and so forth. So same as being proposed for this transaction. Uh, the project in itself, uh, the, again, the primary project we're proposing to finance using the bond proceeds is the treatment plant expansion. Uh, the expansion will increase the plant's capacity from 8.5 million gallons per day to 11 million gallons per day of average dry weather flow. Uh, the project cost is about $82 million and the city of Gilroy's cost uh, is approximately 47.5. 
The uh, financing structure uh, includes uh, basically a 46.2 million estimated par amount, uh, which will result in an annual debt service of about 2.5 million, uh, which is about the same what we're currently paying on the 2010 bonds. Uh, and those are expected to uh, retire uh, by 2023. And then we'll have the first principal payment on these bonds uh, wrapped around those, those bonds and, and they, the repayments will commence. Uh, the bonds are secured by uh, net wastewater revenues. The uh, wastewater utility in itself has, does have um, a strong uh, financial position to support this transaction. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did meet with S&P, uh, the rating agency, and uh, obtained a AA rating, which is viewed as very strong to these bonds. And they also affirmed a AA rating on the existing 2010 bonds um, in fiscal year 22, uh, as part of the budget that the, the council just approved. We are expecting- uh, I your message for Thank you, Council Member Armendariz. So in, in the upcoming fiscal year, we are expecting uh, to receive our wastewater master plan to be available. And then we also have uh, programmed a rate study, comprehensive rate study for both our water and wastewater utilities. So we'll be doing that uh, to address any capital needs uh, identified in the master plan. The uh, action before you is uh, uh, two folds. One is the city council of the city of uh, Gilroy, which is this item. And then subsequently we'll have a separate item for the Gilroy public uh, financing facility authority board members, which is the city council as well to adopt a resolution approving the issuance uh, as well as execution and delivery of any related documents and authorizing uh, any, you know, taking any other um, actions related to this transaction uh, to either the city administrator or, or myself. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I also have on this call Craig Hill. He's a principal with NHA Advisors, which is the uh, municipal advisors on this uh, transaction uh, representing the city, and as well as Danny Kim, who's from Nixon Peabody, uh, which is the bond council on this transaction. We're happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you. Okay. Would uh, I can either go to public comment first or council? Anything burning with council? Okay, let's let's uh, go to public comment then. Do we have anybody from the public wanting to speak on this item? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. Seeing and hearing none. Okay, council, any uh, discussion or questions of Harjot? Then is there a motion? To adopt the resolution. So, so move motion to adopt the resolution. Okay. Second. All right. Made by council member LaRomagno, seconded by council member Bracco to adopt a resolution of the city council of the city of Gilroy approving the issuance by the Gilroy public facilities financing authority of not to exceed $55 million of Gilroy public facilities financing authority wastewater bonds series 2021A, approving the execution and delivery of various related documents in connection with the offering and sale of such bonds and authorizing the taking of certain other matters related thereto. Roll call, please. Council member Armendariz? Yes. Council member Bracco? Yes. Council member Hilton? Aye. Council member Laura Munoz? Yes. Council member Marks? Yes. Council member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes, and that passes unanimously. Okay, with that, we adjourn to the meeting of the Gilroy Public Facilities Financing Authority. What else am I supposed to do there, Andy? Uh, now the clerk will call a roll call and then you'll proceed to the, uh, the item item one listed the uh, approval okay. by the board of directors of the bond issuance. We okay. need to roll call first. Okay, so uh, Gilroy Public Facilities Financing Authority Board of Directors. Here we are, roll call please. Board member Armendariz? Yes. Board member Bracco? Yes. Board member Hilton? Here. Board member Laura Munoz? Yes. Board member Marks? Yes. Board member Tovar? Yes. And board member Blinkley? Yes. 
Okay, so that being done, we move to item one, the only item, approval by the Board of Directors of the Public Facilities Financing Authority for the issuance of wastewater revenue bonds, series 2021A. Arjot. That'll be me again. Um, this, I guess I'll ask a, a question for uh, our city attorney. Do I need to make a, uh, a complete presentation for this item or? No, I, I, you can make a, a long or a short one. I mean, this, this one I assume should be fairly short because you just gave a longer one. Uh, absolutely. So um, just a brief summary, I'll do a verbal report. Uh, the recommendation before you is to uh, adopt a resolution of the board of directors uh, of the Public Facilities Financing Authority approving the issuance of the bonds. Again, uh, this is going to be uh, raising approximately $50 million, primarily to uh, fund the SPRA treatment plan expansion. The plan, uh, expansion project is estimated at a uh, total cost of about $82 million. And uh, Gilroy share is uh, approximately $47.5 million. So we're uh, looking to raise about 50 million, which will cover the, the complete project, any contingencies or overages we, uh, unforeseen overages we might have, and or any other um, wastewater uh, collection system projects that we, uh, we have within the city. Um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, council, any particular questions for Harjot? All right, seeing none, are there any public comments? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. Seeing and hearing none. All right, thank you. Okay, so then with that, I would be looking for a motion and a second for the possible action item we see. Councilmember Tovar, you're on mute. So move. Sorry. Okay. Second. I'm sorry. Okay. I saw Councilmember Tovar made the motion. Was Councilmember Laromanos the second? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. To adopt a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Public Facilities Financing Authority approving the issuance. I just read this. Issuance of Gilroy Public Facilities Financing Authority not to exceed 55 million of the Gilroy Public Facilities Financing Authority Wastewater Bond Series 2021A and approving the execution and delivery of the related documents in connection with the offering and sale of such bonds and authorizing the taking of certain other matters related thereto. Roll call vote, please. Board member Armandaris? Yes. Board member Bracco? Yes. Board member Hilton? Aye. Board member Lerma Munoz? Yes. Board member Marks? Yes. Board member Tovar? Yes. And board member Mer uh, Blankley? Yes, that passes unanimously. All right, with that, we adjourn to the meeting of the Gilroy City Council. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, item 15, city administrators reports. Madam Mayor, just real quickly, I wanna thank all the members of the community who participated in the mattress recycling on Saturday at San Ysidro Park. It was a very successful event. Uh, lots of mattresses and box springs that were uh, put in a truck and hauled off for recycling which means they didn't make it into uh, any other areas that we don't uh, want them to be. And so this is the second time we've done this event and both have been very successful and will continue to do so. So uh, this, this idea for this program came from a resident. So if, you, um, if you're not happy about something, uh, don't be afraid to let us know what you think we can do about it. And every once in a while, it, it works out really, really well. And it, it has in this program. So thank you to uh, the residents who brought this program to my attention. That concludes my report. Great. All right, city attorney's reports. Uh, no, I have no report this evening. All right, thank you. Uh, then with that, we are adjourning to our meeting of June 21st. Good night, everybody. Thank you all. Good night. Yes, all right. thank you. Good night.